Fox Sports welcomes you to the Echo Park Texas Grand Prix. NASCAR's second trip to Coda, Circuit of the Americas, just outside Austin, Texas, and its first trip in the dry. It was monsoon weather last year, and look at this racetrack. 130 plus feet of elevation change climbing the hill to turn one. Down through the S's with decreasing radius to the hairpin. Turn 11. Onto the track's longest straightaway, 160 miles an hour before turn 12. Through the stadium section, through the carousel, off turn 20, and you climb that hill again. Nothing to it, right? Tony Stewart joins us after the Daytona 500. He got another week of community service, and here he is. <laughs> Thrilled to have you in the booth with us, absolutely, <laughs> to offset my buddy Clint Boyer. Because at this racetrack, the calamity corners just also happen to be the best passing zones. Oh, absolutely. Always the best opportunity in a little bit of calamity. And those opportunities are where right off the bat. Let's go up the hill. You said 130 uh, feet up the hill. Turn one, massive uh, uh, passing zone right there. And then all of a sudden you get all the way down through the S's into turn 11. You saw in yesterday's race, it, it was the determining factor. And winning a truck race, you can see them fanning out, getting into one right here. Five, six, seven, I don't know, 27 wide. <laughs> I can't call it. But making the corners one thing, and that's exactly what can happen. Then the truck race, getting into 11 that I was talking about. You got Bowman getting into freezing, getting into Bush, opening the door for Zane Smith to win his truck race. Awesome racing at this track. <laughs> Wonderful place. But then you get, okay, you get down out of turn 11, down that long straightaway to a very technical section of this racetrack. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the longest braking zone going into turn 12. So like you said, 160 mile an hour down to 45 miles an hour. Heavy, heavy braking zone. A lot of passing opportunities there. But then you get into the stadium section. And that is the most crucial part, I feel like, on this racetrack other than the S's. It is so tight. So you have to be so considerate on the throttle to take care of your tires. But also, every corner is setting up the next corner. And it all happens fast here. As you can see, there is no definitive line. Every driver has a little bit different style and different spot. And you get all those three cars, and by the time they get back to the start-finish line, they're only separated by hundredths of a second. So road course racing has its own set of strategies. Larry McReynolds. But, Mike, I love it because my playbook gets very big when we go road course racing. You see the race analysis there. Two key elements for me is that fuel window and the stage links. Unless you have an extraordinary car like Kyle Larson did at Sonoma last year, it's almost impossible to win a stage and win the race. So you're going to see crew chiefs, they'll flip these stages. You'll see them pitting before pit road closes before the end of stage one, stage two, to try to keep that track position. But then you have drivers like Denny Hamlin and Brad Keselowski, they need points. You'll see them stay out and get those stage points. Mike, the bottom line, a full day of comers and goers. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. It'll be interesting to follow. Ryan Blaney has had the most interesting weekend. It began in practice, turn number 10. The car got up on the rumble strips, got light, went into the wall. Heavy damage? Uh, not so much. Blaney comes back and wins the pole for today's race. Well, let's take his temperature as we get ready to race. Let's get a hold of him, the pole cat. Hey, Ryan Blaney, it's Boyer up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Hey, Boyer, yeah, man, I got you. All right, buddy. Yesterday was wild for you. Some practice laps uh, seemed to go a little bit worse than, than the qualifying lap. But tell me what you learned uh, in practice to put forth at that big lap and being on the uh, front row of this race today. Yeah, you know, practice obviously didn't go as planned. I just uh, kind of hit that curb wrong at nine, or I mean 10. And it just jumped my car sideways and hit a front block and I overcorrected. So. Uh, you, you know, the biggest thing you can do is just learn from your mistakes and, all right, let's figure out a better way to get through there and not have that happen again. Um, and, and really cool that we had a fast but our Tristan Ford Mustang to be able to go out and sit on the pole, and thankfully we hit a pretty soft wall. So looking forward to today. Really cool to have a bunch of people out on a beautiful day and hopefully put it on a good show for everybody. Well, buddy, good luck to you. Thanks for your time. You've been strong all year long. Let's see if today's a day. Can, uh, good luck. Thank you. First road course pole for Ryan Blaney, who leads off our Echo Park Texas Grand Prix starting grid. Daniel Suarez, best start ever for Team Trackhouse. He has a lot of his fans from Mexico here at the closest track 
to his home. That's row one. Row number two, Cole Custer has his best Cup Series start. And last year's pole sitter, Tyler Reddick, runner-up in our last road course race at the Roval. Alex Bowman ran the trucks yesterday, finished eighth here last year. Joey Logano, third here last year. He has one road course win in the Cup Series. Christopher Bell won on the Daytona road course last year. And his teammate, Denny Hamlin, the 2016 Watkins Glen road race winner. Justin Haley made the top 10, final round of qualifying, best cup start for Haley. And Austin Sindrick, who led four laps here, running dry tires before the switch to Reigns. Row six, Kurt Busch uh, with the best average finish of anybody this year. And Chase Elliott at the top of average running order. Kind of a tale of two seasons between those two sixth row starters. There's a look at it. Chase Elliott with the best average finish and uh, average running position and Kurt Busch with the best average finish on the grid. So let's go to pit road, beginning with Jamie Little. Well, Mike, you mentioned it right there. Two guys to watch in my section today, Kurt Busch and Chase Elliott. And you mentioned it. Kurt has been finishing races better than he's been running. The team wants to change that today. Clean up those mistakes, whatever it may be. They want to run better, so it gives them a better opportunity to win at the end of the day. Now, Chase Elliott, on the other hand, you mentioned he's been running well, but the team has yet to finish in the top five at the end of one of these races. But good news for Chase Elliott fans. He is the king of turning left and right, and today, he is the defending winner here. He is very comfortable when it comes to road course racing. Regan Smith. Well, Jamie, Ross Chastain is currently one of the hottest drivers on this circuit, riding a three straight top three finish streak right now. But it's Circuit of the Americas one year ago where he got that first career top five and has been riding a wave of success ever since then that has led him into the 2022 season. The difference, though, that race was in the rain this year, obviously, in the dry. So he ran the Xfinity race yesterday to gain some extra experience, ran very well up front, leading laps, challenging until a late race spin. Crew Chief Phil Surgeon told me that race is going to be very key for him today, understanding this track and the differences in the, in the wet and dry as they try to get Ross that first career win. Thanks, Regan. This time by, they're going to run them down pit road, single file, to check uh, pit road speed on their tachometer. It's going to be very interesting to, to keep an eye on Chase Elliott in that nine car. Um, not exactly where I thought he would be qualifying. Actually, the whole Hendrick bunch, um, a little bit struggled, you know, with the speed a little bit yesterday, but long runs are going to be a different uh, game today. But back to Chase mm -hmm. Elliott. I picked him earlier in the week for my Fox bed stuff. I picked him. He's the guy. Everybody knows he's the king of road courses. But I talked to him, Tony, as they walked by on the red carpet right before the race. I didn't sense a whole lot of confidence in his voice. So, again, going to be interesting to see what the nine camp can do today. Long day for sure. And he's a guy that all he's got to do is just have one good stint. If he can get one good stint, get his confidence back, he will be back. And he's somebody that you give him an opportunity to road course, he will sink his teeth into it. Joey Hand, a winner at Le Mans at Sebring and the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona, uh, carrying our Ford camera today and driving the number 15 for Rick Ware Racing. They uh, tore up a tire and got it fixed. A.J. Allmendinger. Uh, also will be starting out back after changing a steering rack. The uh, Action Industries onboard cam for Allmendinger. Plus 1,600 odds for that gap right there. We're going to talk about betting odds. I think Allmendinger would be one to keep an eye on. Kyle Busch carries our Toyota cam from 15th spot. And Chase Briscoe, the Mahindra Tractors cam. Another good one with odds right there as you can see plus 1600 comes from a lot of uh, road course racing in his background yeah a dirt driver but he's spent a lot of time with Ford Ford has developed him on the road course side and the monster energy cam rides with Kurt Busch from 11th starting spot and bumper cam there man I tell you what that's even better I, I don't know I think I'll take him that's good finishes there so far. You already said it, Mike. Austin Sendrick with a top 10 start here. Remember, he led this race one year ago. And that's a forward on board camera as well. 24 shifts per lap. Hopefully made easier with the sequential shifter and a five-speed gearbox. 
There you see up the hill in fourth gear. Down to third, second, first gear. Up to second as you keep coming downhill to third. Second all the way through the S's. Down to first, all the way up to third. Out of the hairpin, fifth gear. Only place you use it on this track. And back down into the stadium in first. The carousel in second. And then get your speed on for turn 20 and up that hill. And you can just see how busy these drivers are all across the racetrack. And that's why you're so worn out after this. There's just no place ever to take a break. Joey Hand did not get to qualify, so uh, he's in the back along with uh, Andy Lally, whose car failed inspection and did not get to qualify. Others for adjustments. Daniel Suarez from the outside pole. I don't think they needed a pep talk before they rolled off, but they got one. Do your job. Good day to have a good day. Let's go, guys. Heck yeah, buddy. Well, thank you guys for all the hard work. Everyone back at the shop. And for the uh, rockets, they just finished the job. We can do this, and then we can do it. A lot of confidence. Yes. Should be. Rightly so. Yes. The all-new 300-plus horsepower Toyota Camry TRD will lead the field. Toyota headquartered here in Texas. And driving the pace car, WWE legend The Undertaker. You'll see him take his place in the WWE Hall of Fame and see all the uh, WWE superstars next weekend, WrestleMania 38. Who live thought from it? AT&T Stadium in Dallas. He's from Houston. You imagine putting that guy behind a pace car? He can go out there and do whatever he wants. There ain't nothing you're gonna say to that man. Well, he's gonna take a Toyota and just sit there and use it like an aluminum can and just crush it. Maybe go away. They go. They do that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Two more turns and we come around to green. Ryan Blaney from the pole. Daniel Suarez. Looking for his first Cup Series win. Well, that team trackhouse, what a roll they are on. His teammate Ross Chastain will start 16th. You're riding in row five right there, or row six with Kurt Busch. Watching these cars warming their tires up, getting the brakes warmed up. Almond Nigger coming clear from the back. Um, again, a race that's just full of unknowns, just like the season's been. flag and the Echo Park Grand Prix is underway. You can already see him fanning way out. That didn't take long. <laughs> Suarez way to the outside coming around turn one but he's got the line for turn two against Blaney. This is one of the most technical sections of the track. It seems like the corners are very symmetrical, but the further you get into them, the tighter they get, and the, then you get off camber corners like this. So a, a very, very technical section of the racetrack. Tyler Reddick into third. Cole Custer fourth. You, know, you just said, I heard you, that Tyler Reddick, as soon as I heard you uh, say his voice or his name, that's the first time I've heard it, and I'm telling you, he was fast set on the pole last year here in the dry, and I think he's going to be a factor today. Suarez takes the inside, Blaney crosses him under, can't get it back, exiting and 11. That's that passing zone, exiting 11, or getting into 11, just like we were talking about. Here comes another passing zone. Massive speed down this straightaway. Tony, you said clear down to 45 mile an hour. Fifth gear to first gear. And who can utilize the brakes the best? This is where a lot of time is going to be made up today. Now, there are no out of bounds here except in the S's. Turns four, five, and six. We'll get to that when we get back there. Otherwise, there's, if it's paved, use it if you got it. And that's the great thing about this course. It's very well designed. It has a lot of runoff areas. So if the drivers get in trouble, they get a wheel off. It's not like you're in the grass or immediately in the kitty litter and, and get stuck. You can, you can have mistakes, but recover. You're going to lose the lap time. You're going to lose positions, but you're going to have a, a race car that's intact. They go way wide in turn 19 to get that launch at turn 20 and climb the hill. 
but you see some of them not. And that's what I like about that section of that racetrack, just like you talked about. You might go off and use that run off there, but it's all about setting yourself up for that next corner. You see some of them running wide, some of them are holding it shallow. It's all in how they choose to set themselves up for the next corner. All right, one lap complete, only 1,340 corners to go. <laughs> Piece of cake. So as you come down through the S's there, they don't want you to cut the course. Uh, that red and white striped area, those are the rumble strips, and that is part of the racetrack. But if you get to the inside of that with all four tires on the red pavement, you have cut the course, you're out of bounds, you're going to have to do a pass through down pit road. Yes, all four, four, five, and six, all four tires underneath that red, white hash that you see on there, you have to stay at least the one set of tires on top of that. And that is only for the S's turns four, five, and six. Second place, Reddick. I had a look inside of Laney. Not that time. Had a lot of guys commenting on how loose their cars were in practice yesterday. Some of them making some adjustments. You're going to have to make some of those adjustments. How about this, boys? Just talked about it. The old uh, uh, police are already out. Got to check a, a, a ticket out. 27 car. Loris Hesemans, champion of the NASCAR Euro Series. Uh, yes, that that is uh, that's an easy call. That's cutting the course. This is a tough thing about this racetrack. Usually when you have uh, a rule like that, there's a runoff area where they can just stop and go. Not on this racetrack. They couldn't find a safe place to do so. That, that results in a, a pass-through penalty on pit road. Huge time loss on this racetrack. And that stop and go penalty historically has been a much smaller penalty if you think about the amount of time at pit road speed that you would take going the entire length of pit road. So it should be an incentive program to not do that. <laughs> yes. So much optimism this weekend in the Daniel Suarez camp. They know that they have been close to winning. Both he and teammate Ross Chastain. They have the cars. They have the crews. They have the desire. And here at Coda, Suarez has had the speed all weekend. Austin Sendrick will give us a bit of telemetry here in the lower left. And we've got our whoop data. Yeah, look at the whoop data. Is that heart rate right there? 153 beats a minute. Some of these guys aren't athletes. Three and a half, four hours of that. Get you some. We'll ride with him through these S's down to turn 11. The and hairpin. You can see using those inside or outside tires are touching, uh, you know, that red and white curbing. That's fine. First gear wide entry against Denny Hamlin here. Boy, Denny Cross missed under. pretty bad there, Tony. Yeah, it's almost like he was content to tuck in behind Joey. But at the same time, you, you got to be careful. There's, you got to be very strategic about not doing too much to break your momentum and allow somebody else to get underneath you as well. The other aspect of that is you're using different spotters here. One spotter can't get the job done. Three different spotters. That may have been an instance of man, he just wasn't comfortable hearing that new spotter in his ear. Didn't like what he said, uh, you know, whatever, and, and wasn't comfortable. Gave that spot up like you were talking. Cindric moves up to sixth. As Suarez leads Blaney, that's seven tenths of a second, first to second. Here's Kyle Busch in 11th, right behind teammate Christopher Bell, six and a half behind the lead. And Chase Briscoe back at 13th has uh, had an off course excursion. Watch the red car, upper left. Ooh. Oh, come back, come back. Hey, it's on the paved part. I'm still good with that so far. <laughs> I've got a lot of racing to go. <laughs> so says his car owner, Tony Stewart. I think you heard him locking the wheels up, getting into the corner, had to let off the brake. And here are the NASCAR officials. Well, there's once again, remind your drivers, all four tires on the non-track side of the red and white rumble strips. That's what results in the penalty going through the S's. 
And that's the enforcement on the rule in the S's. Uh, Boris said, a four decade road racer in NASCAR, he's had to make a pass through penalty. Pretty cool to see him here. Four decades of racing, taught a lot of these drivers out here on this track today how to get this job done. Last year's winner here, Chase Elliott, back in 16th, uh, Jamie Little, four spots down from where he started. Yes, it's kind of been a struggle since they unloaded here, Mike, on Saturday. I talked to his crew chief, Alan Gustafson. He said, we were just off. He said, the steering wasn't right. My driver wasn't comfortable. So they made a couple adjustments in that very abbreviated practice session yesterday. They only got a handful of laps. So he said, we're just going to go for it today. It's basically a test session for them to see what they need in the car. So much so, you guys, yesterday in qualifying, he actually followed Kyle Larson for a lap just to make sure he was hitting his marks and getting everything he could out of that car. It's just Jamie. uncharacteristic out of a, you know, a guy that's won so many road course races. And I heard it in his voice. I asked him, and it kind of caught me off guard. I didn't know if, if I made him mad or what happened. And I think he was telling the truth. He's just, man, I don't know. I can't, can't get the hang of it here today. But some tells me before this day's all said and done, he'll be there. Well, two big things. We've never raced here in the dry. And this is a brand new race car. First time we've road raced it. Pretty yeah, sure I it's think the there's ladder. just a lot of variables that, that everybody's trying to get used to. You're, you're truly trying to make sure you learn the racetrack. And learning the race car is probably the biggest factor. There's so many things with what we've mentioned early in the season of going from steering boxes to steering racks, larger brakes. You got all these different variables that are new to these guys that they're having to learn. Let's check with Regan. Mike, you guys mentioned all the variables that these drivers are having to learn. You saw Chase Briscoe have that off-track excursion a couple right after that happened. He reported to the team his shifter is getting stuck on the downshift. So evidently the shifter getting stuck caused that off-track moment for him, mm. having some issues in the 14. Boy, pretty early to have his shifter being sick. Yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, it, it, most of the time, and you know as a driver, we've both been drivers. We've been in cars enough to know most of the time problems don't get better yeah. and don't fix themselves so just hopefully will it won't get worse with an old transmission that's two levers and you get them hung up with this one it's one so maybe maybe don't kyle bush in 12th place we listened in turn 11 suck i got no brakes i got no turn i got no drive Half a track. i think that's the worst problem tony yeah uh, no brakes no drive it's hard enough when one of those variables is out of sync. Now you get all three of them, it makes for a long day. Four laps complete at Circuit of the America. Daniel Suarez from Monterey, Mexico, has led them all so far.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Ford, built for America. And by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Five laps complete. Daniel Suarez has led them all from pole sitter Ryan Blaney. Here today is Ford Track Facts. Ford has 16 wins in Texas. Texas World Speedway. Benny Parsons got there first in 1981. Kevin Harvick, the most recent, coming at Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth 2019. Texas World was up in College Station, Texas, a racetrack that is no more. Well, the gap hasn't changed much. Blaney keeping Suarez in sight about 1.3 seconds back. Tyler Reddick, three back in the white car, then Joey Logano. And waiting on Ryan Briscoe, that's that red car by itself, just in front of Chase Elliott. And we heard he was having issues with shifting. Larry McReynolds. Yeah, Mike, let's go to our Ford Performance Cutaway car. That is a big change with this car this year. It is a five-speed sequential shifter, not the four-speed H pattern. And you pretty much, it's the lever is still to the right side of the driver, just like the O shifter was. But you just keep clicking it back, second, third, fourth, fifth. And it go, there's a rod that goes through the firewall. Pretty simple process through the firewall to the gearbox back there. And of course, now when they downshift, they just start clicking it forward. So a lot different from what we had the last time we were at a road course back in 2021. That's what kind of scares me when I heard him talk about that uh, sticking. You know, obviously you saw from that graphic that there's a couple places that have hinges where something like that, a stick would be, but more than likely, it's probably back there in that gearbox. Yeah, in an area that you're not going to be able to fix today. So exactly. it, it's just the hope is that it just maintains and doesn't get worse. Well, let's bring in Jamie McMurray on the differences between shifting here last year with the four speed, this year with the five speed. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned it. We've got uh, one more gear. L last year, about 13 times for what we saw the guys shifting per lap. This year with the extra uh, gear that they have, 20 to 22 times you're going to see them shift. And I know Boyer's not real good at math. I can't speak for Tony, but that's about 40% more that they're going to be shifting this year than last year. Tony doesn't start counting until it gets to millions. <laughs> I wish. Now, A.J. Allmendinger, yesterday's winner in the Xfinity Series, had to change a steering box and had to, re had to start this race from the back. I'm this good at math. He's passed nine cars already, which is the biggest mover <laughs> moving up through the field, McMurray. And also, going back, you see how easy that shift was? No worry about crossing the gate, Louis. Just like, and this is a good point to see. He won this Xfinity race yesterday, Tony, with a four-speed transmission. Now, sequential gearbox just going back and forth with a gearbox. The old days, those guys would have to worry about, you know, some guys put a pad underneath their gloves, um, some tape around there at times because you would have massive blisters from shifting so much. But with this sequential gearbox, much easier to shift back and forth, just have to go, you know, literally back and forth up and through the gearbox and down. No missed shifts and no money shifts going from third to fourth and getting second instead. Exactly, and that's that's the benefit to it. That's what saves our hands. The hardest part, as you know, was making sure that when the age pattern was first was up, second down, then second to third was up, over, and back up. So that left and right of making sure, like you mentioned, the gates, that was the big thing. The sequential shifter is way easier on these guys. It's just for these guys that have been old school racers for a long time of reminding themselves that the shifters are sequential and don't make that mistake going the other way. Well, Brad Keselowski's had a rough week, as you heard in the pre-race. Uh, a huge penalty for a body modification a week ago at Atlanta. That penalty is under appeal, although his crew chief is not here uh, this weekend, serving out the first week of what would be a four-week suspension uh, if the penalty is upheld. So uh, Brad's had work to do here, and he has dropped nine spots since the start of this race. You know, following along right there, I've had a lot of people ask all weekend long. We kind of talked about it. Why do they have windshield wipers on? It's the perfect day. <laughs> and the truth is, there's some juice to be squeezed there. They get pretty crafty with the size of those windshield wipers these days. Maybe some aero advantages, huh? Well, and it's still mandatory. No matter how good the day is, they are mandatory at all road <laughs> course races. But it, you're right. I think everybody, we, we as an industry, are always looking for every area that we can make better, make more efficient, 
or give us a little bit of an advantage or help somewhere. So utilizing those tools in every circumstance. Austin Sindrick up six spots since the start of this race. Doesn't surprise me the bit. Very accomplished road racer. Look for him to be there at the end of this race. Completing lap seven this time. He started out in Bandolero and Legend Cars running at Charlotte on what is now the Roval course. I don't know, riding along with him too, listen to how strenuous this car is, or this track is on, on the engine. Just always ringing that thing out, staying in second gear a lot through the S's. A lot of RPM at this track. William Byron right where he started, 22nd. Martin Truex, uh, minus two from where he started. And Blaney is making some inroads on Daniel Suarez's lead. He sure is. He cut about four tenths off that last lap. And none of these guys ran this many laps yesterday. They, it, the total amount of time that they had for practice and qualifying, they barely ran, what, 12 laps, I think, total yesterday. So this is, this is their first opportunity to really understand how much the tires fall off. And, and they're probably taking care of them as well. And going along that thought, I'm super impressed with how consistent of laps that these guys are running. Daniel Suarez within a tenth or so, and even Blaney right on his heels, within a tenth of a lap, every single lap, very, very consistent. It's asking a lot out of a track with 20 corners. Daniel Suarez has led every lap so far as we take you, Fox, side by side. Well, turn 12 was the temporary undoing of Kyle Busch there uh, with a spin under braking at Which, the end of that long straight. And away. you heard him just before, just a little bit ago, saying getting into 11, couldn't get stopped. Braking was an issue. Let's ride with him, see what happens. All right, let's ride along with Kyle Busch. Look at the 
<laughs> I don't think that was braking issue nope. there, Tony. <laughs> no. That wasn't a downshift problem. It wasn't a brakes problem. It was a uh, got a little push from behind problem. Little help. Kyle has recovered. He is now 27th. He was in position to win it yesterday. Got dive bombed on the green white checker. He sure truck did. Race. He had that race won. And well, not only did he not win, he didn't even finish second. I mean, they <laughs> was three wide pushed him out, opened the door for Zane Smith. Joey Hand started out back. He has gained 10 positions. And we're hearing over the radios a report of the Hendrick cars perhaps having overheating issues. Austin Sendrick keeps marching forward. He's in fourth place after starting 10th, Jamie. Yeah, Mike, you guys were talking about Austin and just all the road racing he's done. I mean, he's only 23 years old. He's raced all over the world and talking to his crew chief, Jerry, Jeremy Bullens, he told me that is our strength, how good he is around these types of tracks. In fact, you guys, a little note, back in 2014, right about there, he raced in Rallycross in the X Games and he made the podium. And today he was wearing the medal. It's a belt buckle as he goes around Tyler Reddick. He was wearing the belt buckle for a little extra inspiration today. Sendrick completes the pass. So mark him up to third. A gain of seven. Now you still have a chance to win $10,000 of Clint's money on Fox Bet Super 6. It is free to play. So just scan the QR code now. Download the app and enter your picks about today's race for a free shot at the jackpot. Didn't have one winner last weekend. Looking forward to seeing who can come take my money. Get on that app. Super 6. Fox Bet app. Let's go. Free to play. Two, free to pay, baby. Take your chance. Four laps to go in stage one. Today's stages 15, 15, and 38 laps. Regan? Mike A.J. Allmendinger having a very good run so far. Matter of fact, up 13 spots right now since the start of this race. Told me before the race started he had concerns about how he would be able to pass because of the new brakes on these cars. The braking zone's way deeper into the corner. Some corners are 100 feet, some corners 50 feet. He said he thought it would maybe make it more difficult for him to make moves for the field. Evidently not right now. The only thing he's worried about in that race car, the temps are climbing just a little bit, so perhaps a little issue there. Very warm day here in Texas. Almendinger chasing Bubba Wallace down to turn 11. 11th place, Chase Elliott. Won by Denny Hamlin. Larry Mack? Yeah, Mike, this is where the strategy starts kicking in. Remember, they close pit road with two to go at the stage. And when it closes is when the leader crosses the start finish line with two to go. So we have another lap before that happens. But if you're on back in the pack and you're going to pit before they close pit road, you're going to have to come this lap. If you're up there near Suarez, the leader, you can at least run one more lap. If you're going to pit, if you're going to flip the stages like I talked about before the race started. It's important. I mean, it, I, I, th I don't think track position is near as crucial here on the road course as it is on the ovals because you have so many opportunities to make good, clean passes, and, and the field's going to string out just enough that you're just not stacked on top of each other and get the bogged. The side of that, just a little bit, in my opinion, is is the tire fall off. There's not it seeming to be a lot of tire fall off, so maybe I might need to lean on old Larry to give me some track position, give me some strategy. We saw Kevin Harvick there in 15th, and Alex Bowman got by Tyler Reddick a lap ago, and now he's making a run at Austin Sindrick. Pit stops, as Larry predicted. Regan. Mike Denny Hamill with the 11 car, as Larry said, coming down pit road, going to attempt to maybe flip this stage just a little bit. Right now, that race car has been too loose for him. He's been sliding back just a little bit. I believe all the Toyotas are in. You see Christopher Bell on the right. Kurt Busch takes off. Eric Almarola among those who stopped. Bubba Wallace. Almondinger right there in front of 
Denny Hamlin. So Larry, remind us, what's the benefit of stopping now? Well, what will happen, Mike, you have to stop at least one time in these first two stages because that's 30 laps and that's beyond the fuel window. So if you pit now, when the stage ends here in about two and a half laps, you can stay out. Everybody that pits during the stage, you gain all that track position. Again, it's what we call flipping the stages. Up front, Daniel Suarez has led every lap. 13 so far as he crosses the stripe, 1.3 ahead of Ryan Blaney, 1.1 ahead of Blaney. Alex Bowman now in third place, about four and a half back. Bowman was one of three drivers with Stuart Friesen and Kyle Busch who had a shot to win that truck race in the two lap shootout yesterday. And you see these two guys right here. You saw Alex Bowman in the 48 pass to a Cindric. By far the two fastest cars on the racetrack. The only two as a matter of fact in the uh, 14 second bracket. Two minute 14 that is. Here he comes. Austin Cindric on pit. Final opportunity to pit before the stage end right here. And this is really going to shake the race up. Jamie. Tenth to fourth for Austin Sindrick there in the opening laps of this race. Remember, he led four laps here last year when he was a rookie. As they work the left side, he has not said a word on the radio. Very comfortable, very focused. Meanwhile, Cole Custer had his best qualifying effort ever. Third in this race is in. You see him right there in the one cure car. A little chassis adjustment and four tires to you, Regan. Tyler Reddick in the eight car right now, just sliding the rear tires a little bit too much. That race car, in particular, the turns 13 to 20 section of the racetrack, struggling with that car some. So it looks like only 12 drivers have not made a pit stop, and Austin Dillon has an uncontrolled tire. And an equipment violation on Todd Gilliland on his stop. So at the end of the stage, they will go to the tail end of the line. You heard me talk about not a lot of fall off at all. I mean, basically, from his fastest lap, about a half a second of fall off of Suarez, the leader. So the drivers with a 12 next to their name on the pylon uh, were the drivers who had not yet pitted. And they go down to uh, Harrison Burton in ninth, along with Stenhouse, Keslowski, Balicki, and Cody Ware, uh, and Andy Lally. Those drivers have not made an appearance on pit road. Because of the lack of fall off, the good thing is, whether you had to pit with three to go or two to go in the stage, it's it's not such a drama because without tire fall off, you're just you're just pitting a lap earlier, basically. Okay. Oh, that yeah. would be an uncontrolled tire as it rolls off into the next pit. Man, he didn't really look where he was rolling that thing either. He just assumed it was there and a little bit off, rolled right in the pit box in front of him. So as you see in the map at the top, the two car of Austin Sindrick is the first in line of the cars that pitted. And you see the gap from Daniel Suarez back to Sindrick, which now is about 40-40 seconds. Andy for Austin Sindrick, just ride here, protect your tires, don't lose the spot, but save as much as you can because we're obviously going to stay up. He has about two seconds on Tyler Reddick. Yeah, there's nothing you can gain going forward at this point. All you're worried about is just not losing positions. You can't gain. You're going to gain those in just a second when this caution comes out at the end of the stage. Final lap of stage one. Daniel Suarez has one career stage win, and not surprisingly, it came on a road course, Watkins Glen, in 2017. He began racing in go-karts on road courses in his native Mexico. And I'm telling you, I'm a believer, track house racing, they're established. I mean, we're six races in. I'm considering them established with the front runners. They've made a believer out of me time and time again, week after week. We were like, well, maybe next week they'll fall off. 
Hasn't happened at all. Justin Marks right there, the team owner. Great job establishing not one team, but two really good teams. That's right, Cowboy. Good job. Uh, happy birthday, Justin. He celebrated on Friday. Well, he's liking what he sees. Yep. Maybe Daniel Suarez, Ross Chas Hank can deliver him a win here today. And happy while we're day. at it, happy birthday to NASCAR Hall of Famer Cale Yarborough. It is his special day today outside of Darlington, South Carolina. Woo, slipping and sliding. You can hear those tires talking to you. Sure can. You think that's that sidewall? You know, the stiffer sidewall, the, the, the tire doesn't roll over as much, kind of makes the tire shear a little bit more, and you can sure hear him, you know, like you were saying, ball and sliding out from underneath of him. Absolutely. Well, Daniel Suarez has the second stage win of his cup career. For fourth place, Joey Logano beats uh, Kyle Larson to the line. The top nine drivers did not pit. Austin Sindrick gets one stage point. He was the first of the cars that pitted ahead of Sindrick, Chastain, and Custer. Daniel Suarez walking the walk at Circuit of the Americas. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR.
15 laps in the books at the end of stage one, a caution free stage in which Daniel Suarez led every lap from Ryan Blaney, Alex Bowman, Joey Logano and Kyle Larson. All the top 10 that you see got stage points and the only one of those that has been to pit road is Austin Sindrick in 10th. Joey Hand there among those that made pit stops toward the end of the first stage in 32nd A.J. Allmendinger in 19th after making his stop and Kurt Busch 22nd and there's 10th place Sindrick. It hit, it hit 92 here yesterday and I think we're headed there again 92 degrees that is. Well boys if you could see the way I look underneath this suit I was set up by the pool a little too long. <laughs> look like a lobster. <laughs> All right guys if we see one of those leaders stay out that hadn't pitted they're going to stay out they're going to do this race on two stops Jamie Little. Kyle Larson in his pit box said he's lacking some side bite. They're going to try to help that by adding air pressure in the rear tires. Four tires stop here. His teammate Chase Elliott says, my car does exactly what I wanted to do when I wanted to. I just need to get myself in a rhythm. Four tires here, Regan. Alex Bowman in the 48 needs that race car to take off a little bit faster and better. Needs some front turn. The 12 car of Ryan Blaney right now. Too loose. No drive off with that race car. And the 99 of Daniel Suarez. Pretty good. Just a little bit free with the back of the car. Daniel Suarez leads your Ram race off pit road. Alex Bowman gains a spot and Chase Elliott picks up four. That's pretty good. And to Larry's point, none of the drivers who didn't stop earlier didn't stop now. Style up, Daniel Suarez. Amigo, it's Boyer up in the Fox Sports booth. You got me up here? Man, stage one winner. Holy cow, you've got some speed in that hot rod. Uh, what are you going to have to do to bring a win and deliver a happy birthday to your boss today? What's up, amigo? Uh, it's early. It's early in the race. We have a speed. We have to keep up with the track, making some a couple adjustments. Um, we already decided to get some stage points, and we lost some track position. But I think we're fast enough that we're going to be able to pass some cars here. Well, I guess I'm going to put it on a show for you guys. Let's see what we got. <laughs> All right, buddy, we'll be watching. Get up through him. Thank you, amigo. Daniel Suarez, after pit stops, will restart, I believe, 20th. We'll check that when we come back. But Suarez is your stage one winner.
Lights are out atop the safety car. Road course racing is a little different. Instead of start finish, the one to go is given at turn 11. And they'll get the restart when they come to the front straightaway. Coming to the Geico restart zone to begin stage number two. Drivers who stopped at lap uh, 12 or 13, beginning with Austin Sindrick and Tyler Reddick, Ross Chastain and Cole Custer will lead them back to green. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. Things getting pushy shovey right here. Oh, Suarez. Round round. Suarez. Why well, is he's having trouble getting fired back up. I think his left rear down too. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, man. No. We'll get back in this. Oh. He restarted 20th. Now he's gonna have to nurse it around. A long way at that. All the way. Three miles on a flat left rear. As Austin Sendrick leads Ross Chastain, Tyler Reddick, and Denny Hamlin. I'm never talking to somebody on the radio again. Tony, it seems like every time I talk to somebody, I jinx him. <laughs> but that's at that Calamity Corner. You called it. We talked about it the first of the race. They fan out, you know, four, five, six wide right there. Kyle Larson around. That's why I'd say we are going to have action all day long. This is going to be nonstop. These guys are going to be pushing each other, having to protect their lines, but it also creates other opportunities at the same time. Battle for the lead, getting in at 12 right here. A lot of breaking zone. Who's going to out duel who? Ross Chastain, a lot of experience running yesterday. See Got if Cindric crosses line. him under. No, side by side. They got to run him off. Didn't see that coming. No, and he, no. Was, he paid a lot of respect. Chastain gave him room right there. In my opinion, maybe too much room now. He's wide, he's gonna get passed twice. Yep, Tyler Reddick to second. This is that section that we like that's first gear and everybody has so many different lines. It gives these guys opportunities to move around. The line you wanna run for speed is probably not the best line in traffic. You have to protect yourself. Somebody's gonna dart in a hole pretty Tyler quick. Reddick gets loose. Enabled Chassini to get back under him. I love that part of the racetrack, man. Suarez is battling, trying to get that left rear limp back to the pit area. Doing a lot of damage to that back to wow. future. This second place battle won't quit. Now, finally, Reddick edges ahead. I think everybody's learned, got a little more confidence. They know where these passing zones are. Confidence in knowing what their car is going to do now. See another dive bomb by Chastain. Everybody knows once you get established, you kind of get in your run, get spread out, harder and harder to pass. And I don't know about the new brakes because I haven't, you and I both drove it at a quarter mile track, but historically having cooler brakes gave you the ability to go a lot deeper in the corner on restarts. So it's Reddick. always an advantage to have cooler brakes. Sure. Reddick lost his momentum, got passed by Denny Hamlin for third. And uh, let's go back to turn one. Daniel Suarez, right of your screen, restarted 20th. Just got all jammed up there. Yeah, it's five wide. And, and again, you're trying to give those guys room, which he did. And the next thing you know, coming out even farther yet. Good grief. Calamity corner. I think you're right, Mike. Very unfortunate for your stage one winner. Oh, now he couldn't get it stopped in his pit box, had to back up. The only saving grace for this is the track is so long and the lap time is so long that he, he did a great job of limping this car back without damaging it. They got plenty of time on the pit stop without having to worry about going a lap down. So it's not, it's not the end of the day by any means. And even if he does go a lap down, he would be the only car one lap down. So yes. plenty of time to make this back up. Last year, Austin Sindrick surprised everybody here. He's no surprise he's leading now, and that was Almondinger going past. Was that Cole Custer? Yes. That is fifth place. Certainly some contact going past him. 
as well. 41 on Paul Custer. Go get the next one. Didn't take Almendinger long to get, get to the front from the back. And he is a bulldog on road courses. He is aggressive. Not running full time, not running for points, but he wants a win here. And he's a great road course racer. He's got a great road racing background, just loves NASCAR racing, loves being in the Xfinity Series, but having the opportunity to run a, a very large partial schedule this year in the Cup Series is, is great confidence boost for him. And I think he's having fun with his team. I mean, the, yes. this whole group's having a good time coming to the Cup Series. Ross Chastain closing in on Austin Sendrick, your race leader. 19 laps complete. The first laps that Sendrick has led in this series since the last lap of the Daytona 500. Daniel Suarez led 15 laps. Now he's got to fight his way back. The USFL is just 20 days away. The inaugural game has the New Jersey Generals taking on the Birmingham Stallions in prime time on Fox and NBC. Coaches and players are in place in Birmingham and getting ready. Skip Holtz versus Mike Riley, the coaching matchup on April 16th on Fox and NBC. Austin Sindrick leading here at Circuit of the Americas outside Austin, Texas. Ross Chastain three quarters of a second back. Tyler Reddick and A.J. Allmendinger has passed Denny Hamlin for fourth place. Michael McDowell shortcutting the course in the S's. He'll do a pass through penalty. Jamie Little. And Kyle Larson, one of those that spun. Very painful for him. He's back in 32nd right now. Cliff Daniels, his crew chief, came on the radio and said, that's all right, take care of your car. We're going to have to change up our strategy here. They also warned him about what he's doing in the S's. Remember, because you are the fastest car to the S's, and I'm not making that up, you've got to be responsible through there. NASCAR did send us a note just saying, hey, just be careful because we're 
we're right at the edge. We have no reason to push it at this point. There's so much reason. I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm trying to hear you. Yeah, I'm trying to hear you. Kyle Larson inside of Kurt Busch and makes the pass. Yeah, you heard me talk about it. Listen to these in cars of how they're ringing those engines out, just you know, constantly, almost borderline in the chip up through the or down through the S's and uh, a lot of parts over in the stadium section of this racetrack. So, just trying to back off of those RPMs a little bit to help the temperature in the engines. And a lot of that's dependent on if you're in traffic too. If you yeah. if you're following somebody, you don't have a Can't lot of Can't afford to do it or being followed, trying to hold somebody yeah. off, you know. But exactly. if you're out making lap times, a lot of times, honestly, you can shift into that third gear momentum and be faster yet, not even trying. Kyle Busch on the way back after a, a spin caused by contact from Chase Elliott. He was in 10th, but Eric Jones, one of a number of cars who started out back for unapproved adjustments, climbing up into the top 10. Now all of the first 14 cars back to Joey Hand in 14 all made pit stops prior to the end of stage one. The first of the cars that pitted at the stage break is Chase Elliott in 15th ahead of Logano Bowman Haley and Briscoe. I love this section of the track. This is this we, we brought a two seat car here and this was the, pro, the part of the course that I had the most trouble with. The entire time I was here, I never could get a flow for it. Uh, Daniel Suarez, who had a tire cut down on the restart, he is in 38th. He is still on the lead lap, and his last lap was just as fast as race leader Austin Sendricks. So do not count him out. So Daniel's heading down toward turn 11 uh, as the leader works his way out of turn two, as you see in our track map at the top. You said Daniel Suarez is fast. His teammate, Ross Chastain, fastest lap of the race and in a 13 second bracket. Uh, fast, fast lap out of his teammate, Ross Chastain, as well. So frustrating for Daniel Suarez. Just gonna have to be patient. That caution will come. You'll get a chance to re-rack, get reorganized, get tires, re-establish in this race, make some passes, maybe some strategy, and uh, get yourself back in. There are your leaders. Out of the hairpin, turn 11. 160 miles an hour, and the only place you hit fifth gear on this course, right here. the other part of this straightaway that makes it so challenging getting into turn 12 the big passing zone here is it's downhill hard to get that thing slowed down getting back down through the gearbox from 100 and some mile an hour to 45 in first gear last week's winner William Byron up for seventh place Regan well Mike these teams constantly updating the drivers as to what they're seeing in the data on the racetrack take a look listen to what they told the 24 driver William Byron a moment ago I mean, one gear higher in turn two. That's our biggest detriment to the best guys. They're all less RPM, less RPM in turn two. One gear up. So that's going to be in turn two. That's that's that section. And even on our uh, shifting map that we had, there's a little piece there. If you go back and look at that, that was shifting your third gear. He's saying a lot of those fast cars, including I think we saw Daniel Suarez using third gear through there. That tells me a little bit more uh, momentum, a little bit of speed and a taller gear helping that lap time. Xfinity fastest lap of the day, Ross Chastain, 91.6 miles per hour. Austin Sindrick, 91.6. Daniel Suarez, 91.5. Bowman and Custer, 91.4. And back to your point on the shifting, some of these guys in this section stay in second gear. To your point of, as drivers, we're already getting the most we can out of it. We don't need to be shifting and interrupting the, the car and making it nervous. But you're using it, as you mentioned, for, for braking and en engine brake, where sometimes in third gear, you can carry momentum and getting back in the throttle, it's just a little easier on the tire. It's not as easy to, to shear the back of the car loose. Well, the other aspect of that, too, is those temperatures uh, that, that we hear them talking about shifting. That's going to help that. 
26th place. Kyle Larson trying to get past Ty Dillon. Digging himself out of that hole. We saw him backwards. The first lap. And we have Cody Ware and Loris Hesemans who were nose to tail shortcutting the S's. Hard for that car behind to see where you are. I mean positionally. So they both got nabbed. 11th place Kyle Busch Kevin Harvick and just ahead Chris Buescher the draft down this straightaway move to the inside make my move late and Busher got in the corner way harder than he can he you heard he him earlier him. talked about uh, oh and he missed the apex <laughs> and he missed the corner you heard Kyle Busch struggling with getting into the corner in 11 already I think that's exactly what you saw <laughs> But if I'm <laughs> Chris Buescher locked him up going in there and slid off course trying to keep Kyle Busch behind him. Now he's door to door Chase Elliott back there. Yeah, that was something I didn't expect to see was Kyle Busch at the end of the, the straightaway there. Just lift a little early and let him get in the corner. Well, I found out the rest of the story when he drove and missed the corner too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice run for Cole Custer. Uh, that green and white car in sixth place. Jamie. Yes, Mike, it's been a smooth day for this 41 team. Cole Custer had his best ever qualifying start today, started third, and he credits a lot of that to running in the Xfinity Series yesterday. Sure, not a lot transfers, but he said just getting his rhythm back on a road course was a huge help to him. He finished third. And right now, Tony, he's your best running car. So far, so good. Yeah, and I was super impressed yesterday when, when, when we watched the practice sessions. He was up to speed right away, and I'm sure a lot of that came from running the Xfinity car, but he has had speed in this Ford all weekend. Very consistent laps. Hasn't been flashy being the, the top of the board or second of the board, but he has been super consistent up front all weekend. Custer in sixth place. Austin Sindrick, your leader after 24 laps, and we take you Fox side by side. Austin Schindrick, your leader. Ross Chastain has finished second the last two races. He is second right now by just a car length. Had a shot at Sindrick there, but push did not come to shove. Too soon. Larry, too soon for our subway right combination? 
never too soon, Mike. And it's going to actually be Ross Chastain, his crew chief, Phil Surgeon, in this number one team. This is their second season together. This is actually the same group that was at Chip Ganassi racing last year in the 42 car. In these first five races, three top fives all in the last three races, they have led 125 laps already this year, and it does not seem to matter what track they go to. They are fast. Could this be the subway right combination to go up there and take the lead, Mike, and maybe get Ross's first career win here at Houston or in Austin? That might be the right combination, but don't look too far for that combination. <laughs> There's another sandwich eater coming. I'm telling you, the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger is catching these boys in a hurry, picking them up and putting them down. And you got to believe the two leaders know he's coming also. I bet the spotters or crew chiefs are letting them know lap times, letting them know what's going on behind. They need to know so they can take care of their cars. They've got a great battle up front, but... They cannot four get more. comfortable thinking four they're more. doing it right right now. Which is exactly what he wants. He wants those guys up there battling door to door, can't yes. get through the corner, slows their lap times down. He'll be right there for the taking. Tony, you've won cup races in this series. What's the difference between the way you drove and the way a road race veteran like A.J. Allmendinger drives? Well, it's all comfort. I mean, if you could get the car to do what you're wanting in key areas on the racetrack, it doesn't have to be perfect for all 20 corners, but it has to be very comfortable at key areas. So if you can get the car comfortable there and work on those corners that you know are going to make and break time, that's that's what you got to work on. And if you can get it there, then you can relax and, and take care of your car. Lead battle still very tight. And Cindric and Chastain. A little bit of a wheel hop right there. And that's something that these cars with independent rear suspension kind of did away with. But I heard either the, it was either the brake lock up or some wheel hop up. Nonetheless, you could see Chastain get closer to him. And the reason is, look over your shoulder. Stage two is almost over again, Tony. Four laps to go. Another opportunity at some of these guys. Let's see this race flip-flop again, Larry. You talked about it. Two to go. Those guys pitted. The top dozen cars all pitted before the end of stage one. Let's see how many of those come in before the green and white checkers wave for stage two. In Look at those heart rates still. Lap. If you're want... back in the pack, you're going to have to come this lap. You're going to have to come. You see it? And, and Austin Cindric still pumping. Man, right out almost 160 beats per minute. It's been that way since we dropped a green flag. Ross Chastain, same way. And Working the crazy thing, being inside time. the car like that, you don't even realize your heart rate's that high. <laughs> you feel like you're in control, you're comfortable, you're in a rhythm, and you feel like you're relaxed. And then we get to look at the monitor here and look at the beats per minute and go, yeah, that's that's a workout. Now, Tony, hang on just a second. There's <laughs> nobody listening that's ever seen you. There's no way if we had a heart rate monitor on you back in the day that that was going that hard. I don't believe it. I, I don't know if I'd have wanted to drive working that hard. <laughs> But somehow your talent you didn't have all right Christopher Bell is in and that means the other Gibbs cars are likely coming with him pit road getting kind of busy here Martin Truex Chase Elliott Jamie Chase Elliott's had a pretty good car today. He said it's not bad just struggling with the front early on but it's okay they're going to make an air pressure adjustment for tires he is down and away so again, the field pretty well split in half among those who will stop here and those who will wait and stop at stage end. So one of Clint's questions for stage two, you're trying to win is $10,000. Where will our pole sitter as the lead change? Let's follow the lead change. If it happens here, nope, Chastain with a run. He was side by side, didn't get it. Where's Ryan Blaney, our pole sitter, going to be at the end of stage two? He is currently 10th. That's one of Clint's questions. Man, I'm telling you, these questions are tough, especially where the racing is. Speaking of tough, I'm telling you, under braking, Ross Chastain in that one car, he's been strong. That's something I noticed that they were able to do yesterday and even today. This was coming into turn 11. Coming down the hill. You can see it all under braking. 
and doesn't get himself in a bad position under there where he's locking the left front up because he's having to overdrive it. I mean, he's very controlled in the braking zones, which they is impressive again, right now. Side by side. Plenty he's of got room. him this time. Finally got position on him. Yep. Can he get the crossover? Castain with the inside oh. line, and oh, they they're pit. Both gonna pit. They're going to pit. Ha <laughs> ha! Wow! Oh. You know, pit road speed limit is yellow line to yellow line, and they came in there pretty hot. Jamie. An exciting battle all the way in, and as you see, Austin Cindric in the number one pit box. There, a four-tire stop. They made an air pressure adjustment to help him out, but he has been quiet all day. Regan. Ross Chastain continuing to flex muscle on all types of racetracks. That race car right now loses drive, meaning when he gets on the gas, it spins the rear tires just a little too much as the runs go on. And the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger, that race car right now, they fixed the forward drive on that car last stop. He likes the changes they're making. He needs it to grip better in the rear through the corners. So drivers who did not pit include Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, and Ryan Blaney. They are the leaders with two to go in stage one, uh, stage two rather. William Byron, too fast to entering pit road. He will go tail end of the field for stage three. We talked about you don't want to go to the back. You don't want to have to try to fight your way through when it comes to the flip-flopping of do you pit, do you run out and get the stage points? At the end of stage two on a road course, I want to have that track position. Yes. I don't want to have to come from the back. Absolutely. Stage one, you don't mind giving it up to get the points, but absolutely at the stage in the stage two, you want it. So Christopher Bell was the only Gibbs car uh, to come in there. So here are your Toyota top performers. Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch won two. Bubba Wallace in 10th. Kurt Busch in 17th. Bell. Uh, and Truex came in there 20th and 22nd. They both pitted. No need to race them. They'll be staying out. No need to race them. That was Kurt Busch's team. They are 17th with Hamlin, the leader. And Hamlin, we talked about it deep in the points, needs stage points, needs something to dig himself out of. You know, take him wherever you can get him. And this stage two, 10 points goes a long ways towards that goal at the end of the year. If, in fact, you're gonna have to race your way in. About 11 seconds separate Hamlin and Kyle Busch as Joe Gibbs Racing tries to get their season on track. They were lined up for a 1-2 finish earlier this year, but a caution flag and a green-white checker uh, stole that opportunity from them. Teammates Logano and Blaney for third. And Al Marola rounds out the top five, so two Toyotas, three Fords. The first Chevy is Austin Dillon in sixth. Not got under him there. That's what I love about this track. The, the corners aren't so long to where the apex is a long apex at the bottom of the corner. It's a point in a lot of sections. So if you miss it by a little bit, you miss it by a lot and you create a huge opportunity for yeah. somebody to get their nose. In the, the other corner. side of that for two guys racing like this, you have to hold it out to yes. get that drive up off the corner. And if there's somebody in your rearview mirror right on you, you can't do that because you open the door up for them to dive on you and make the pass. There's Kyle Busch's day. Now remember lap 14, he fell back to 31st. Uh, he did have that spin when Chase Elliott got into him coming into turn number 12, but he has fought his way back. He was in position to win the truck race, and they went three wide at turn 11 on the green-white checker, and none of them won it. Zane Smith crossed under, got the big launch off 11, and went to victory lane. Last lap, stage two. Last opportunity. A lot of points. I don't know. He's going to have to get close. You can see him dive it off in there, Tony. Doesn't get much closer. <laughs> <laughs> Gave up a little bit on exit. Still through the stadium section of this track. And Kyle really got through there good. Oh, Joey slipped up. Yeah.
he's going to hold him off. Denny Hamlin, your leader, coming to turn 20 for his first stage win of the season. The fight is for second. Nine seconds behind him. Ten needed points for Denny Hamlin, and then it's going to be Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, 2-3-4. Eric Almirola, fifth, Austin Dillon. Rookie Harrison Burton, then Ross Chastain, Austin Sindrick, and Bubba Wallace lined up for the stage points. Most of which go to Denny Hamlin. Uh, Clint, I saw you and Took 50,000 tons of sunset red granite to build that state capitol here in Austin in 1888. Beautiful structure. You know, Texas is the only U.S. state to have once been an independent country. As the Ukraine fights for its independence, Fox Corporation has helped raise over $12 million for the American Red Cross to support their mission of providing aid and resources, food, water, medical supplies, and housing support to people in Ukraine and those who have been forced to leave their homes. Please join us in supporting the Red Cross relief efforts. Donate by visiting redcross.org slash foxforward or just scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Pit Road is open the end of stage two and here comes Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Logano, Blaney and the rest of the leaders, not Joey Logano and Blaney, they stayed out, Jamie. 
Eric Almirola, one of those pitting, got really sloppy there in his own words, loose. So he needs some rear grip. So does Kyle Busch, says he's just as bad there, lacking rear grip. That's kind of been the issue since practice yesterday. Regan? Chris Gapehart on the 11 car said that he would keep Denny out there to get the, as many points as he could. That's exactly what he did. That race car right now, struggling through the slower corners. He can't exit the slower corners as good as he'd like to. Here's your Ram race off pit road. Hamlin and Kyle Busch and Al Marola in first out first with Austin Dillon, whose brother Ty picked up two. And William Byron picks up three spots. Hey, Denny Hamlin, it's Boyer up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, four. Man, got you some much needed stage points there. Uh, hottest day of the week, uh, the year so far. I was curious about the track conditions, if there's any part of the track that you're struggling with more than others out there. Uh, mostly it's turns one through 20. <laughs> Well, obviously, you're not struggling near as much as any of them. You won the stage, but uh, honestly, passing zones, breaking zones, uh, some of the tighter sections, is there anything that stands out more than others? Yeah, I mean, I think I can you know, continue to work on the braking side of things, get more aggressive. Um, the tighter corners, it seems like I'm having issues, or I feel like I'm having issues getting it turned and then accelerated, but you know, it seems like we're losing time possibly another spot, so just, uh, just keep working on it. <laughs> That's right, buddy. One through 20, only 20 turns. Good luck, bud. Only room to go up. <laughs> Denny Hamlin, your stage winner. Uh, Tyke Dillon, improper fueling on that stop. 31 laps complete. Stage two winner, Denny Hamlin. And by Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed.
31 complete, 37 to go. We begin stage three. Caution-free race so far, except for the stage breaks. Joey Logano and Ryan Blaney have not been on pit road since lap 16. Everyone else pitted just before the stage ended or during the stage break. So the two Penske Fords lead them to the Geico restart zone. On old tires, by the way, in the one, the two, and that's 16 in Almondinger. I'm looking for them to pounce and pounce fast. They're going to try. Everybody on the lead lap. They all fan out. Whoa, Joe Logano. And funnel down without Logano. Logano hit the brakes, and that thing took a hard right. And he ends up 12th, and Blaney gets shuffled back as well. The only thing I can think of, Tony, is it had to have locked the rear brakes up. But how that thing went right instead of left, that was very odd. That's not what you expected on the restart, obviously. But what we've seen a lot with these guys is when they have to make a correction to try to catch the back of the car, it seems like it's easy for them to overcorrect. So for it to, whether it was him turning it or whether it turned on its own, but it, for some reason, these cars, it's easy to overcorrect them. Well, you knew you saw the teammates of, of Logano and Blaney up there on the front row. You knew those three tires, or three cars on four tires are gonna be a battle for the lead. And who is it gonna be? Chastain in the one car. Second straight restart, the leader did not make it cleanly through turn one. Here's another look. Ready. Green flag, all rolling, all rolling. All rolling. Still inside, mind up. Oh, it didn't line. go right. It went left first. Yeah. Man, big time lockup. And even the left front lockup of Ryan Blaney right after him. Yeah, Blaney locks the fronts. Everybody just too hard, too deep into that corner. Wow, great save, Joey Logano. That was a big, big save because that could have went wrong twice, both times that he corrected. They pretty, exited pretty control. They exited turn one five wide. <laughs> when it starts doing that too, it's such a helpless feeling because the only thing you can do is get off that brake pedal and <laughs> you need it to stop. That's why he shot over there. And again, give credit to a racetrack that's got that runoff area, enabling him to have that. Wasn't a trap, a, a rock trap, or grass, or anything else. Sixth place battle here. All clear, all clear. By half. That was out of turn 20, back to the front straightaway. Cross and Bell comes right back after him. And now he's reestablished on the inside and right position. May see another crossover. But I think Christopher Bell's going to hold him out. Make sure your brake fans are on. Things I've been noticing is on the exit of these corners, you can see the dirt flying. Got oh, Joey Hand goes around. Take it to the top of the hill and turn one. Joey's had a rough weekend. Yes. Practice didn't go so well yesterday. Some issues today. Let's show you what happened to the veteran road racer. Left side quarter, left side quarter. I'd say the Tim turned him around. Yes. And Austin Sindrick has spun. like that's off a of 10 coming downhill it's a kink it's a it's the same place that Ryan Blaney yesterday had an issue going over the the curbing I think uh, the same exact, same exact thing as yesterday thing as his teammate all right let's ride with Cindric and listen here whoa wow. that was close so close to Christopher Bell and caution is waving for debris On the throttle, bottom down. You heard that big yeah. smack, and that's where that chassis is hitting the ground and just unloads the rear tires, and you're going to lose grip that way, especially downhill. So close to hitting the wall. Caution's out. It's going to help him a lot. But that's exactly right. The car bottomed out. First caution for cause here. 
Well, the two drivers who have led the most laps have both had spins today. Daniel Suarez and Austin Sindrick. We're under yellow in Austin. Under caution, Ross Chastain is your leader with 34 laps to go in the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. Earlier, Michael Waltrip took Echo Park sweepstakes winner Rocky Forrester for the ride of his life. Rocky! How you doing, Mikey? How you doing? Echo Park sweepstakes winner. Your experience is just getting ready to get a little bit better. Oh, wow, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm going to take you for a ride in my Tundra around the racetrack, and I'm going to try to scare you. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do this. G-Force activated. Coming right here to the Lone Star flag. Don't mess with Texas. No, don't mess with Texas. <laughs> We're coming up to the checkered flag. Throw the checkered flag. This is it right here. Woo! Rocky, I got one more surprise for you. All right. On behalf of Echo Park Automotive, I'm going to give you this Tundra. No way. Oh my god. <laughs> I need a bag. <laughs> this is your truck, your baby. You're going to drive it home. I just want a truck. Oh my god, Mikey, just hold my. You just gave me a... <laughs> <laughs> How That's about awesome. that? awesome. Well, we've already had one winner here in Austin, Texas. Who will be the winner 34 laps from now? Ross Chastain, A.J. Allmendinger, and Tyler Reddick bring them by under caution, along with Ryan Blaney, Christopher Bell, Joey Logano, who had that slide up at turn one, has chosen to come to pit road. 
Let's go back and listen to Logano after that wild restart. And turn one. Sorry, uh, hit the brakes, they locked up. Rear's locked up on me, thought I'd be all right there. Well, we knew that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's still a heck of a save. Yeah. Could have been way worse. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. There were Not there were a lot of things that could have went wrong in that transaction. So unfortunately, they didn't give a chance for their strategy to play out. That's the only bad thing. Austin Sendrick also pitted along with a number of drivers in the back half of the field. Thirty three laps to go in Texas. From road racing to short tracking next Sunday on Fox. We're at Richmond on the three quarter mile. Three o'clock Eastern time on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And joining Clint Boyer and me in the booth, seven time champion crew chief Chad Kanawis. Going to get a double dip of Chad at Richmond and Martinsville to help break it down. Two short tracks in a row. The next two weeks in a row for NASCAR on Fox. We've had the what what is Gordon's new role? What is it? Vice, vice chairman. chairman and now we have the vice president. president. Man, we've got a lot of vices in here. What's your Don't, you have a title? Your title? Owner. That's a good one. <laughs> the boss. I like that. Owner of that one. OK, everybody is still on the lead lap. We've not had a free pass all day. Ricky Stenhouse nabbed for speeding. He will go back two spots and restart at the back. Ross Chastain, A.J. Allmendinger will lead the land rush up the hill to turn one. The two of them combined to lead all but five laps of yesterday's race. And we're going to get through there cleanly. Wow. 
You notice the trade off. Those guys hug the inside trying to protect that. But on the exit, they all end up way wide because of it. It's also funny how they learn. You know, they, you keep pushing a little bit harder, 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 harder until something happens, and then all of a sudden the next restart, everybody kind of settles down and calms down. Well, the last restart, we were three wide coming down the hill. Now we're minding our P's and Q's through the S's. But for Tyler Reddick and Chase Briscoe. Something happened to Bell there. I don't know if he missed a shift or what, but he's going to lose three or four spots, if not more, by the time we get to 11 here. Here's your three wide into 11. Whoa. And you hear, heard that downshift. I'm going to tell you, turn 11 is extremely challenging as a race car driver to not over rev that engine on a downshift. When these not things blow up, you're like, well, how did it happen? Because you have a rev and understand. If you downshift that thing, in the, in, and turn it too much on a downshift, it'll actually blow through that rev limiter, break a valve spring, and ruin your day. Well, it's mechanical. It's mechanical versus electrical. On the upshifts, it's it'll cut the ignition out. On the downshifts, it's literally the the wheels are spinning the motor, yeah. so it doesn't matter what the electronics. Uh, electronics are doing. is telling it to, and it can't. Yeah. Chase Elliott picks up three since the restart. Note Blaney is still out there on those tires he got back at lap 16. Well, that's the bet he, he made. He's having to ride it out here, hoping this strategy plays out. How about Denny Hamlin, Regan? Like Denny won that last stage, but keep an eye out. He just radioed to the team that he has a steering issue in that race car right now. I'm, it, that's it. I'm not. We, I, I can't call anybody else. Tony, you're taking over. Definitely don't talk to my four drivers if you can avoid you're it. You're going to. What kind of issues have they been having with these rack and pinions? Yeah, I've heard, uh, I've talked to a couple of the drivers, you know, I, I take this back to Phoenix, where we heard Blaney talking about, there's the issue, I just saw Christopher Bell coming down pit road, but I hear these drivers talking about the steering shaking back and forth, the wreck and pinion front end, I don't know if it's slop, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, cavitation, something within that rack and pinion steering is creating these, uh, you know, havoc for the drivers and same thing I've talked to some different guys as well and nobody truly understands no they don't know if it's the the teeth or if it's servos or what's going on whoa trading paint yeah Chase Briscoe Tyler Reddick I don't think he meant to but he leaned uh, Chase Briscoe on the 14 leaned on Tyler Reddick pretty hard I was wondering if the pay, the favor was going to be repaid I think he was actually happy that he was there kind of caught him yeah. got him sorted back out <laughs> Up front. Man, he's only got one. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Regan. Mike, you guys see the 20 car on pit road, another Joe Gibbs car, another steering issue right now on this restart. It's weird how it all happened at once for both Gibbs cars. I was going to say, last to, to second here for A.J. Allman during the 16. One yesterday. Can he sweep the weekend? One spot in between him and doing so. Can you imagine how big that would be for him? Oh, I mean, he did it last year. Absolutely. You know, you want to talk about th this is a ringer in a Cup Series. Yes, yep. the dinger has been in, in NASCAR, you know, winning the Xfinity races, but he's not, uh, you know, a permanent driver in no. this thing right now. And I'm telling you, as a ringer coming into this against this competition in the Cup Series, the job that he is doing, you just can't speak on, enough about it. And don't forget, he started in the rear under penalty because they changed the steering rack uh, between yesterday and this morning. With all of the races he has run and won in IMSA, uh, in IndyCar, in open wheel and closed wheel cars, predominantly his career has been road racing. So sure, the Dinger's a road course ringer. Not for good reason. I'll probably stick with it too. Just smooth. I think he checks all the boxes as a road course racer. He's smooth. You got to be that. He takes care of his equipment. He's a good breaker. He gets into the corner hard, but he's aggressive all in the same conversation. But he really knows. He knows when to push and he knows when to save. And that's more crucial on road courses than people realize. You're having to take care of the brakes. To your point of on the downshifts, you have to take care of the motor. There's a lot of variables with taking care of the race car on a road course that we don't normally see on an oval. And AJ is really good at knowing when to take care of that car and also when is it time to push? When is it time to put that pressure on? He just maximizes the day at a road course. 
Martin Truex Jr. is the leading Toyota in this race. He is seventh. Uh, just a lap ago past Cole Custer for that spot. Custer is eighth. Alex Bowman is ninth. And here's 10th place Kyle Busch. Here he comes. Fourth place, Chase Elliott, last year's winner here in the downpour. Mr. Unhappy today. <laughs> he knew he'd figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've I've seen some interviews from you like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I, I think at one time you said you were down and out. Our, se our season's over. Poor me, poor me. Wasn't that the last time you won a championship? Oh. Whoa. Corey LaJoy coming off uh, his first career top five last week. Now it's a little bump and thump with rookie Todd Gilliland. If Todd wasn't there, he wasn't going to make the corner. Right. Eight wheels corner better than four. Always. And once that thing, again, just like we saw with Joey Logano, he didn't have that runoff area. He had a car right in front of him. The only thing you can do when that thing gets to bucking out from underneath of is load off that brake and run off in that area. And you didn't have that nope. in the, the 38 car pretty hard. These cars so, take a beating, though. That's one thing that I really haven't seen yet. Now, mind you, yet, this third stage, when the money's on the line, you get over there to the stadium section of this place. I look for these cars to start beating, banging on one, one another, and they can take it. These things can take a beating. Jamie? Well, Kurt Busch, we're riding on board with him right now, not having a good day. Came in here hoping to have a good race, not just at the end, but their problems have continued. The front is just so tight, he hasn't been able to turn. No lateral grip. They have literally thrown the kitchen sink at this 45. They've unhooked the rear bar. They've adjusted the front shocks, air pressure, you name it. They've done it, and he hasn't been able to make up a whole lot of ground up to 26th right now. Now, you saw how late he was back to the throttle there at turn one. Half of the drivers in the top 10 right now participated in one of yesterday's races. We'll discuss that after this. You wouldn't believe the choreography going on up here, but 28 laps to go, and Ross Chastain in the lead. 
because it's time to look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Well, you're seeing him right there. I'm picking my man, Ross Chastain, one to be number one at the end of this day. Comes into this weekend with three podium finishes. I think this weekend is the time that he gets his boss a happy birthday present right here with a victory. So, Clint, Chase Elliott is the winningest active road course driver we have with seven wins right now. Comes in here at a 21-race winless streak. His teammates have won 10 times since his last trip to victory lane, and they just keep making that nine car better and better, but everybody has one more pit stop to go. Hey, I want to pick the guy that is on a hot streak right now. His stats speak for themselves. A.J. Allmendinger, he's just sitting there waiting for his moment, but he's going to steal the show today. Tony Tyler Reddick is looking for that first win of his career today. That car has been steady all day long. Very good on long runs. Doesn't like it early on, but likes long runs. I got my eyes on Tyler Reddick. Caution is out here in Texas, but I'm keeping an eye on Chase Briscoe. I don't think anybody's traded more paint than Briscoe today. Let's uh, let's see if he can bring it home. Those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. As caution is out for Eric Jones with 27 laps to go. He has pulled off course, apparently uh, lost forward drive. And there are no local cautions in NASCAR Cup racing. Uh, every caution is a full course yellow. Takes a while to get around here, so everybody has plenty of time to think about strategy. Ryan Blaney's been out there since lap 16 on that set of tires. Everybody else came in at either lap 27, just before the stage end, or around lap 31 or 35. So, strategy, Coach McReynolds. And Mike, you cannot script these cautions when they actually come because here we are, 27 laps to go. Remember the fuel window, 22 to 24 laps, but watching kind of our fuel forecaster, I think they can go probably up to about 25 or 26 laps. So, I think everybody comes here, packs that thing full of fuel, try to save as much as you can until we go back racing. Thanks, Larry. Now we listened in on Tyler Reddick and his team. Good enough about what we have to just drive back up through here. First off, take a huge deep breath for me here. Run top five. This isn't two years ago when we were running 15, okay? We'll run top five every week. This is not that bad. Relax, deep breath, reset. Long way to go. Well, I like the way they're thinking. That's one way to calm them down. Hey, man, I like it. Yeah, I don't I know, know why he's so upset. The top five run right now is strong right now here. Well, he sat on pole here last year, qualified well this year. Thinks he has a shot to win it. Might also have been that 14 car that bounced off of him like a backboard at a basketball game. Might have been. <laughs> so let's look at A.J. Allmendinger's day, the Las Gatas, California driver. Stage one, stage two, climbing to the top. Currently second, won by a pretty substantial margin here yesterday. He controlled the latter half of that Xfinity Series race. He's in second behind Ross Chastain. Well, baseball is back April 9th on FS1. And it's the rivalry I grew up with in Hartford, Connecticut. We're halfway between Boston and New York. One side of the street were Red Sox fans. Where I lived, we were Yankee fans. So this opening week slugfest will be on FS1 April 9th and on the Fox Sports app. 27 laps to go in Austin, Texas. Beautiful day. Temperature climbing up uh, toward 90 degrees. The Chevys of Chastain and Allmendinger leading the Ford of Briscoe. The first Toyota is Truex in eighth. This is such a beautiful facility. You can walk the track, you can sit on the hillsides, you can go up the observation tower for 20 bucks and get a view of uh, probably from here to the Gulf. That you tower is 100 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty. You couldn't pay me twenty thousand dollars to get up on top of that tower right now. It's Boyer's perfectly been stable. Me. You could me, Mike. You could me. Yeah. I'll go. <laughs> You're just giving money away anyway. What are you talking about? Hey, that's a lot of money, bud. 
36 people went six for six today playing Fox Bet Super Six. It's free to play and they will split $10,000 of Clint's money pending verification of eligibility and all the fine print. All right. Well done. Free to play. If you didn't get it this weekend, get back on. Join us next weekend. Fox Bet Super Six. A lot of fun. $10,000 on the line every weekend. Now, fellas, this pit road is pretty narrow. If everybody pits at once and with Christopher Bell getting a free pass, everybody will be on the lead lap. Yeah, this pit road is very similar to the one we see at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it creates havoc when everybody comes. And mainly because guys finish their stops that are the first guys in, there's still guys in the back of the pack still coming. They're trying to get in their boxes while the other guys are getting out. Oh, you know, there's a nice touch. They've stenciled the driver name in front of the stall. That's in case you forget your car number. You can look on there and find your spot that just, way. Hey, first class all the way around. <laughs> this place has always been that way. But another thing about everybody being in there, you know, we saw the one car, the tire almost looked like it was getting away out of the box. When there's a car in front of them, that will be a penalty. So with everybody on pit road, everything's a lot tighter for everybody involved, not just the drivers. Jamie. And Chase Elliott, you guys talking about the pit boxes. They asked him to cheat to the right about six inches just to give the Jackman enough time and space. Car is pretty good now. Corner exiting, want a little bit of help, air pressure adjustment. And they come around to the left side for four tires, Reagan. Chase Briscoe on the 14, lacking a little bit of front turn with that race car, in particular through the left-handers, the one of Ross Chastain right now. That car is super close, just not real comfortable at the restarts of the 16 to A.J. Allmendinger. Car is good for him. Another miscue for Kurt Busch. He had to back up into his pit stall. A.J. Allmendinger couldn't get out of his pit box with Blaney in front of him, lost some uh, three spots there. Kyle Busch up four, and Sindrick, no tires, Wow, he picks up 13 positions. Here's the race off pit road. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank. 
the official credit card of NASCAR. Circuit of the Americas, Austin, Texas. Second trip here for NASCAR. First trip with this brand new car. And first time we've raced here in the drive. Ross Chastain is your leader. A.J. Allmendinger came in second, went out fifth. Let's show you why. He gets in the box nice and straight. Everything routine on the right-hand side, smooth. Tire changers got done at the same time. Good exchange to the left side. I don't think it's stopped. I watched this. When he leaves, he has to double clutch a little bit to get around the car in front of him and Ryan Blaney. Ryan's kind of stuck out a little bit with his right rear, and I think the numbers right here say it all. 1.4 seconds slower down the length of pit road. Pit crews were pretty much the same. Chase Elliott pitted from fourth place, came out 11th, and it got pretty loud on the radio for number nine after that. Larry, Austin Sendrick did not take tires. How about that? Well, remember, he was on pit road as well as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Joe Logano at the last caution, so he only had four laps on his tires. Good point. Another thing, car I see up there now, don't look now, but I'm telling the 48 car, he was fast in that first stage, laying some really fast lap times down, and, and when the race kind of flip-flopped, if you will, through the stages of everybody taking tires and staying out, I think he's one to keep an eye on here at the end. Third car inside is Almendinger next to Kyle Busch. Second row, Reddick and Bowman. Front row, Chastain and Briscoe. It'll be 25 to go, and we're back to green. Whoa. Chastain moved, moved uh, Briscoe way outside. And Briscoe and Reddick are together again to trade some paint. Yeah, they've been locked together for a, a lot of laps now. Just can't seem to get away from each other, it seems like, in this race. <laughs> Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott trying to fight back and for the lead. Here comes Briscoe. And you're going to ask, he was definitely all four tires underneath that red and white curbing, but it's only in four, five, and six as that rule apply. That's fair game coming off of nine, setting yourself up. Great corner for Briscoe, but the one had more momentum from that outside line. And around goes Logano again. We stay green. Chastain under braking. Where he's been so strong all day long. Ram Briscoe, pretty wide right there. This part of the track going through the stadium section, Tony, is so tight. Everybody runs a little bit different, trying to set yourself up for that next corner. You see how tight they stayed to the left there. You're trying to protect that spot. Ross is, gets a great, does a great job of getting cut to the left. Chase isn't willing to give it up yet, though. What a battle. Love watching young guys go after it because they are getting a hundred percent every corner Absolutely. of every lap. And Chase is back established on the inside. Even at the line. It's all about setting yourself up for that next apex. Do I give it up here to cross back over and be good for the next corner? Which is the corner that I there it is, another crossover. Chastain looking to the inside. Briscoe did a good job blocking that run. For just a good job of not overdriving the exit from the center of the exit, he was able to keep it down, keep it in the groove where he wanted to be, and that's where Chase or uh, where Ross was aiming for anyway. Uh oh, caution is out. Now that is near the stadium section. Bubba Wallace, and there is Bubba Wallace out by the gravel. That's going to be a vacation 
for his crew chief and whoever else. Lap 45, 24 to go. I think they were trying to get it back, obviously just nursing it back around. If there's the lug nut the falls nut. off, yep. and here comes the wheel. Pretty self-explanatory. And why is the penalty so steep? Because of that right there. You see that wheel flying off. It, that wheel cannot. That's very dangerous to be rolling. A lot of weight, a lot of mass. Do not want that in a grandstand or anything nope. else. Uh, let me also update Brad Keselowski pen, uh, penalized under the prior caution for pitting outside the box. Now, when that wheel was attached, I'm sure the gun felt that the nut was tight, but the wheel was probably not flush with the hub, worked its way loose. Off came the nut and the wheel followed. Well, these teams have been struggling with it all year long. I mean, it's it's about one every weekend we see. Everybody keeps getting better at it, but it's, it's just a new format, new style. There's a lug nut gun that puts the, the single lug nut on. Um, you saw all the holes on the back side of that wheel. You know, just so many different things that go in. A lot of layers uh, to that conversation of how that wheel can fall off with just one single lug nut. Eric Jones gets the free pass, the only car one lap down. Regan? Well, Mike, somebody that really likes this caution right now is the 16 car of A.J. Allmendinger. That race car has been fine for him, but unfortunately the air conditioner quit working in there. He dropped his water bottle, can't get his hands on that. His calves are now cramping as well, so keep an eye on that. A.J. is going to have to dig deep if he's going to win this race. Jamie? And on that last stop, Chase Elliott had the best track position he had had all day. But when he came in to pit, we talked about he cheated it to the right a little bit. But the jackman on the right side didn't get the car jacked high enough to hang that tire on the right rear. He lost a handful of spots now back in ninth. He went from fourth to 11th on that stop. He's uh, regained two since then, as Jamie pointed out. And going back to that lug nut, I mean, it, this is it's new technology to the sport of NASCAR, but it's not new technology. They use it in IndyCar racing, a lot in sports car racing. When the teams get more time with this and get get used to the guns and get used to the nuts, making sure that when they pull it off, they have to pull that off straight so that so the nut doesn't come out of the gun crooked. That's what we've seen those come off during pit stops. But the holes that you saw and you see the pins, the holes in the back side of the wheel go and index over those pins before they put the nut back on. Yeah. All right, owner, we talked about vice presidents. We talked about vice chairmen, talked about owners. You said you're an owner. Yeah. Or your driver's well, leading the race. Talk to him. Be an owner. Listen, uh, Clock biggest, in, owner. I don't know that I want to talk to him today, but I don't want you talking to him, so I'm <laughs> going to do this. Hey, Chase, it's your boss, Tony, in the booth with Fox. You got me, bud? I got you, buddy. How are you? Well, I'm an air conditioned. They're feeding me shrimp and steak up here. I mean, it's nice and cool in your car, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, sign me up for that, other than the shrimp part, the AC part definitely sounds nice. Is there with all these yeah. all these guys, so we are, hopefully we'll uh, not be clear of a goal, bud. Well, you've had an awesome day, man. You've done a great job. You've been fighting hard, been in contact with the eight car or the one car. You got yourself where you want to be in the league. Can you finish this thing off? Well, we keep, yeah, we're definitely going to try. I mean, we got a, a pretty good Mahindra tractor score. We've been working on it all day long and, and feel like we finally kind of kind of got the tires underneath of it. So we're trying to, to do like what you told me at dinner last night with the with the battery, so see if we can hold it off. Well, remember, this car is just about as tough as a Mahindra tractor, so do what you got to do with it. Get the job done, bud. Yeah, thank you, guys. I don't know where you're getting your steak and shrimp at, but I didn't get that. <laughs> I will say I was looking at you on camera. They kind of look like you remind me of Jim Belushi on on Blues Brothers back in the day. All you miss is that cocktail sauce from that that shrimp that belly of yours. Meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> just 21 days till uh, we go back and play in the dirt. That will be the Bristol dirt race Sunday night. New date Sunday night, April 17th on Fox. First time we went to Bristol on dirt, Joey Logano ended up in victory lane. Going to be a fun weekend. Sure is. The last 11 races in the Cup Series have all been won by drivers under age 30. Sorry, Clint, Tony. 
Things have changed. Not looking good for a uh, comeback for either of the two of us <laughs> right now. <laughs> nope, not right this minute. It just seems to be a changing of the guard. Blame it, you know, whatever the case may be, I think it's the car. Um, you know, I think that's definitely where, where it's at is, you know, the game's changed. The ball has literally changed in this sport. Now, uh, we were in Phoenix recently, and the top three in Phoenix looking a whole lot like the top three right here, right now. There's Chase Briscoe on that final restart, keeping Ross Chastain behind him, and that was the key. Tyler Reddick to the outside. Briscoe was able to drive off and leave them and score the big win. Pretty hard to believe. You, you think Two weeks later, here we are. You think, oh, he, uh, you think he still has three. those Tony Stewart uniform pajamas he wore in that picture about age six or so? I know he does. I mean, when we were talking, he says he still has a bunch of stuff from when he was a kid <laughs> in his room. And he goes, ah, maybe now that you're my boss, I can get rid of some of that stuff. I'm like, no. hey, bud, that stuff, I'm, I'm very superstitious. So I'm, I'm all about things being lucky and don't disrupt <laughs> things when things are going well. So I told him, keep it. It's so funny you see you were talking about those pajamas because this is how I know it's our time has passed. <laughs> I was on, I literally was just on Facebook Marketplace looking at cars like I always do, right? And it was a Tony Stewart edition, what it was, a Monte Carlo, whatever it was. It had like $340,000 on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it does, yeah. Buddy, I think we, our days are, are in a rear view. Come on, man. That was a family that <laughs> the dad works first shift, mom works second shift, and uh -huh. the daughter works third shift. They all drive that Keep car. Telling you yourself no. that <laughs> <laughs> so you want to see where the Coke family of drivers are uh, faring right now sure do there they are Denny Hamlin 11th Austin Dillon 16th everybody still on the lead lap Daniel Suarez got turned around on a restart after leading the first 15 laps of this race and Joey Logano has had a couple of spins back there in 36 Bubba Wallace one lap down Andy Lally out of the race early. Everybody else is on the lead lap here with 23 to go. Yeah, that bunch, you know, just heart broke for Daniel Suarez. Uh, won that first stage extremely fast all weekend long. Started on the front row and just cannot seem to capitalize. The other one's the 22 of Joey Logano. Um, again, was fast Saturday, and I really looked for him to be a front runner in this and just can't get it put together. Daniel Suarez will restart 29th. Uh, we hear on the in-car radio they are having power steering issues on that 99. He has led the most laps today. Four more than Austin Sindrick and Ross Chastain. Ready to come back to green. Briscoe, Chastain, Reddick, Almondinger ready to trade some paint in Texas. Chase Elliott, big swing to the right, sent some cars off to the side there. Trying to make some room. See Kyle Larson trying to shoot to that outside. Afraid he got too far outside. One thing about that outside is if you can get around the corner, not get pushed off into the grass, it sets you up again for that next apex like we were talking about. And most likely you've got a lot of momentum because you didn't have to turn quite as tight build some momentum around the outside of that last half of the corner. Cindric back in seventh. Looking at six through eight here. He's under him. I think he's going to move him up. He Whoa. sure did. Big launch off the corner for Chastain, and now Almendinger looking at second place. Almendinger's pushing the 14 pretty hard. I think he's quite close enough. Turn 12. No pressure, I'm back, whatever you need. Oh, Briscoe slipped up. He's able to hold on to Slipped up a little bit getting into the corner. I love this stadium part of this racetrack, the stadium section. So many different lines. You can see how AJ holds it tight. Briscoe, Chastain a little bit higher. Through the carousel.
19. Sweeping off track to get a good run off 20 and back to the front stretch and up the hill. Really good to listen to the end car of those and, and listen how every time the Kyle was going to the next corner in the S's, the pace just slows down a little more and a little more. You can see those guys, you know, pretty easy peasy up front, but man, back here I've been watching these guys just all over one another, slipping and sliding around. That's a massive bottom out. And it's something that you, you see these cars popping over those curbs and it just looks so effortless. You, when you hear those end cars and how hard they hit, and how much it upsets the car inside of it tells a different story for sure. Seventh place. Hear that little hesitation from Cindric on the shift, and that gave that gave Chase the momentum on the inside. It was almost like it didn't quite go any gear. He had yeah, to, just didn't complete didn't complete it and get yeah. it done. But that's how critical it is on that long backstretch to, to carry that momentum. You can't miss anything and, and not lose time. The eight car of Tyler Reddick's a little bit of protection mode. Cut that corner off to protect the 18. Let the 18 get established a little bit, hold it out. And now, see where he's at on the next apex. This is what he's holding on for. He's got it. Alex Bowman as well. So many times though, in a 20 turn road course like this, how many times have we seen guys through the S's, through the stadium section, be able to run too wide and not have issues racing with each other. It is just that I absolutely love this racetrack. I think it's so race friendly. I think it provides a lot of action and opportunity because of the layout. Just think it's a, it looks like a fun circuit to drive. A.J. Allmendinger in third, 1.4 back. Just so you know, buddy, the 14 and the 1 do not get along. Any of us really get along? Well, you know, <laughs> not better than others. He feels good enough to choke. I got to throw stuff out there like that once in a while, just check on him. Yeah, 10 four. Do yeah, any of us it. really get along? Are I guess, you kidding me? <laughs> I guess he feels good enough to joke. He was just talking about air conditioner and upset about that. What he wants them to do is exactly what that crew chief was saying. I want them guys to get up there and not get along and hand this to me, just like we saw in the truck race. Jamie, you got something for us? Yeah, how about the 18 of Kyle Busch? The comeback for him as Alex Bowman tries to go to the inside. But Kyle, remember, he spun earlier on. He raced his way all the way back up into the top 10. And the last stop, his pit crew over the wall got the job done. Just over nine seconds, gave him four spots and put him in this position to battle with the guy he went toe to toe with yesterday at the end of the race. Seen patterns of guys that just can't seem to get away from each other, whether it's today during the day or they can't get away from each other from the day before. <laughs> yeah, and maybe a new, you know, birth of a new nickname this weekend. Did did you ever have one of those seasons where there was somebody that would just always seem to be right there with you? Him? And it was always somebody I didn't want to be around. That oh, was yeah. the bad part. <laughs> it wasn't somebody like, man, this is the guy I really love racing. And every week you're like, man, this is cool. We get to have a lot of fun. It no. was always the guy that you didn't get along with. I had more luck of bad luck of getting into incidences the week before and then having to ride with him in the truck. Oh, never After fail. The yeah, and they week. qualify right next to each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you're standing it with everybody trying to trying to glad hand and be happy with one another. Well, normally you're waving in the back of the truck to the crowd, and in, in your mind you're sitting there going, I just want to grab him by his collar and throw him off the truck while we're running <laughs> right. 30 mile an hour down the road. 
So in a topsy-turvy season in which Spire Motorsports has as many top fives as powerhouse Joe Gibbs Racing, the top six drivers in this race are from six different teams. How about Alex Bowman in fourth place? Right now we're on the number. Anything has to do with short shifts or 80% throttle on straightaways would help. Here's his teammate Chase Elliott to the inside of Tyler Reddick and moving up on Kyle Busch. Reddick was so strong for the middle of portion of this race. But here he's having trouble hanging on to the first half of the top 10. You can see him there. It just seems like he's having trouble under the braking, which are obviously so important and a, a must in an area where you need to be good. Everybody's able to dive in a little bit harder than him and put the pressure on. Speaking of pressure, all three of these guys have a lot of pressure. I think that the front two guys have more pressure than that, that third car. I think the third car is out there to have fun. These other two are doing everything they can do to stay in front of him. So, Larry, how about being right on the number to get to the finish here? Well, and I think the reason they really keep looking at it, Mike, is just we talked earlier, the pace is just not slowing down. In fact, Chase Briscoe and A.J. Allmendinger, they just ran their fastest lap of the race. But remember, they pitted with 26 to go. That's just beyond the fuel window. But those couple of cautions, that probably buys them. That's why I think you're here and you're right on the number. Okay. Chastain, Briscoe, Almondinger. We're going to take you Fox side by side with 18 to go.
17 laps to go in Austin Texas Ross Chastain in front of Chase Briscoe by just half a second A.J. Allmendinger eight tenths back. And while we were away Brad Keselowski got in the back of Ty Dillon neither one of them having a stellar day Keselowski 27th and Dillon around has been able to fire it up and continue in 35th. Uh, Boris said was just penalized for the second time today for shortcutting the S's. Only two cars out of the race Bubba Wallace and Andy Lally. Everybody else on the lead lap with Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch fighting it out here for fifth place. Be interesting to see where Chase would actually have been if he didn't have that slow pit stop. See how close to these leaders he would be. Look at this. Big transition there, left to right. He's putting the pressure on him. And A.J. Allmendinger not far behind. He's now within a second of the leaders. But I don't think he's close enough that they get side by side to be able to capitalize on it unless they get in one another and and shove each other, you know, quite a bit off the track. Briscoe, another 13 second. Both of the other ones are in the 14 second bracket. You know, neither of these two leaders are road racers. Chase Briscoe ran dirt. Uh, Ross Chastain grew up in Florida where all the roads intersect at right angles. You don't have the big flowing, sweeping roads to practice on like you do up north. Not that anybody did that. Oh, Briscoe slipped up quite a bit there. Got loose. I think his car bottomed out. But you say that, Tony. Once he got with the Ford uh, camp, man, I don't know what's happening, but he's really slipping this last lap. And now you see A.J. Allmendinger moving to his inside. When he got underneath the Ford banner, he was able to, to run a lot of sports car stuff and, and gain a lot of experience on road races. And it's absolutely helped him. He'll tell you that has helped him more than anything with sports support of putting him in the sports car series just to get him laps on road courses. That's not at all what I thought was going to happen. You could see he was putting the pressure on Ross Chastain and then all of a sudden started slipping and sliding around and within two corners it was passed by A.J. Allmendinger. All right, what's the calling team in second place now thinking about fuel? I really don't want him to conserve a whole lot unless you don't think we're going to make it at all. I think there'll be another caution. I would say we're probably one short. I would say keep in touch with these guys is what we need to do. We'll keep in touch with these guys, and we might be one lap shorter, kind of two different agendas, aren't they? Well, one lap is a long lap here. Ricky Stenhouse has lost the drive in his number 47. Now there are areas where you can exit the course without prompting a caution flag. That's off of turn 11 getting in a 12. Not sure Ricky's going to find one of those. Where are we? That's a good question. In between 11 off and 12 11 down the hill. 500 yards on the straightaway. It's going to kind of roll back unless he can get it fired back up. It's not what Ross Chastain, the track house racing, wants to see. Not with 15 laps to go. There's Stenhouse about uh, a third of the way down that back straightaway, rolling to a halt. Everybody saw stops. that. How about that? Everybody saw that caution was going to come out, dove to pit road. This could be a huge determining factor in this race. They're going to have to throw the caution. Question is when? Are they going to let these guys? There it is. Caution is out. And when the caution comes out, pit road closes. So everyone who made it to pit road under green huge will have advantage. an advantage. Yeah, I'm not really sure I understand when a car is physically not under power, why they didn't throw that caution earlier. I Instead, you give these guys, you've pit given road. guys, yeah, you've given guys an advantage now to, to get on pit road. Because the other guys had already went by. And those guys are Truex, 
uh, Cole Custer and Kevin Harvick were among those who made it to pit road before pit road was closed for the yellow flag for Ricky Stenhouse. Well, like we mentioned, it's such a long course, the lap times, and we saw it with Daniel Suarez earlier in the race when he had a flat tire. You're not going to go a lap down here. So having that opportunity, and the field wasn't strung out too far, but had enough that you could gain some spots and, and or not at least lose all the, all the track position that you had by making that pit stop. There are a few areas on this course, including one right across from us uh, here on the front straightaway, uh, where there are breaks in the wall for either safety vehicle access or let the pace car out or uh, for the shorter versions of this course. But Stenhouse could not get to one of those to get his car to a safe place. So he stops on the straightaway and the caution comes out. Well, Larry, now what would you like to do? Well, one thing this does, if you were right on your number, this helps you with the fuel situation. But honestly, Mike, we still have 25 drivers out there that's not pitted. They've got about seven to eight laps on their tires. You, you're, you're pretty much, your bet is made if you're up there inside the top eight to 12. You've got to stay out. But now if you're back there around 15th to 25th, absolutely come get four tires and fuel. Well, this should certainly help A.J. Allmendinger's team's concern about fuel. Save like a pig right here. Uh, if we save enough right here under this caution, we should be all good. We should be good to make it fairly. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse broke the drive shaft, so he was unable to get any power to that car to move it off track. And they'll push him back here with 15 laps to go. You know, I just takes me back to the restart when we had Joey Logano and, and his teammate Blaney, you know, on the front row on old tires. And man, they didn't make the first corner and they were swallowed up. All right, now we talked about the drivers who pitted uh, Truex and Harvick and Cole Custer. I seem to remember a well-timed pit stop at Sonoma uh, just prior to the last caution coming out, getting Tony Stewart his final cup win on a road course. Yeah, we, we definitely short pitted because we physically at that point of the race didn't have the speed to get to, to the lead. So Bogorovic uh, called me in two laps early. Sure enough, we make it two laps in the run and the caution comes out. And I'm like, well, we're, <laughs> we're in good shape, but we're also a sitting duck at the same time, but we're able to hold on. That was quite a battle between you and Denny Hamlin all the way down to the final corner. See, Mike, those guys that pitted when that, they thought that caution was coming out, they, they had to get off sequence. They had to do something different. They were not going to win the race head to head against these guys up front. No, they are currently 26th through 28th. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that call. You, you at least give yourself an opportunity to go forward. You're not in a spot that you're happy with. So, so do something. Give yourself a shot at one more adjustment during the pit stop and an opportunity to take those fresher tires even though they're not as valuable as they, they usually are they're still valuable on the, right. at the start of this run all right so you heard uh, AJ Allmendinger's team telling him okay now we have just barely enough Regan well Mike as drivers we've always taken for granted how easy it was to save fuel simply push the clutch in let the car coast fire it up when you want to remember AJ runs in the Xfinity series full time he doesn't have a lot of experience in these new cup cars listen to what the team told him about how to save fuel with this and try to get the max savings I can shut the car off and go on the queue. I haven't been because I'm nervous it won't start. Yeah, as long as you don't let the clutch out in neutral, but like just keep your foot on the clutch, you can. Just make sure you do it on case of when you got downhill that you're sure you can get back going. Well, with a sequential box, you wouldn't go all the way down to neutral because then you'd have to come back up one, two, three, up through the gears again, right? I think that's why he said don't, yeah. don't let the clutch out. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you, <laughs> you and I are up here scratching our heads. Yeah. What, what's that mean? Now, one thing AJ Allmendinger does He's not care about. He's off. Secret. Is uh, is having a good points day. He's not eligible for points in this series. He's here for one reason, and that's to win this race. Absolutely, and that's the position he's got himself in at this point. Is just to, you know, he, I think. I think we watched while AJ's been in third there. I think there's more than what he was showing. I think he's just being very, very strategic about how hard to run. He's watching the one of Chastain and Briscoe racing really hard with each other, hoping that they're going to wear each other out. 
I think he's just being super smart at this point. And I saw that exactly at the moment when Chase Briscoe had that little slide and got off. Almendinger pounced, and now he's the second place car. Exactly. 14 laps to go. Your progressive race summary Ross Chastain is one of eight leaders today. He's now been out in front for the most laps 19. 10 lead changes. 37 make that now 36 cars on the lead lap with Ricky Stenhouse out. And we've had six caution flags, including the two stage breaks. Now, the drivers that are part timers in the Cup Series that we call the road course ringers, those with a lot more, let's say, road course than oval track experience, like Joey Hand, who's won at Le Mans at Daytona and at Sebring. He is in 18th. Boris said, has had a little trouble with the S's. He's in 33rd. Rookie Loris Hesemans, champion of the NASCAR Euro Series, 36th. Andy Lally's car had trouble in inspection and only ran a handful of laps and is out of the race. But A.J. Almadiri Dinger carrying the flag for what I like to call the Dan Gurney group, the road course <laughs> ringers, after uh, the all-time road course great who won five races, four in a row, at Riverside, California for the Wood Brothers. Denny Hamlin, our stage two winner, choosing to stop here. William Byron. And as you said, Tony, if you weren't up there in a position to win this race, hey, let's try something. Absolutely. Let's, let's try stopping here, getting fresh tires. They have five sets plus one carryover set from practice. At least let's see what we can do to get ourselves back up front. Well, the other thing is, too, is you have no idea with all these guys up front on old tires. You know the melee's coming. You know they're going to start pushing harder and beating and banging on these restarts. If another caution comes out and five or six, seven, eight of them take themselves out, now you're in the catbird seat with track position with tires. Watch these drivers who just took tires on the restart. When they get up the hill to turn one, up into that sucker hole. I'm going fast. I got new tires. I can pass all of you. And they're going to be six or seven wide going in there. Well, and Larry might be able to add more to this. I think those guys that, that were the first ones on pit road were really hoping that they would draw all the cars behind them on pit road. They wouldn't lose the track position, but would still have those fresh tires. Yeah, because the top 15 stayed out. But what I like to say, this is about the time of the race. The wires start sparking inside the helmet. That's exactly right. So these cars up front have 13 laps on their tires. The last time two drivers stayed out on old tires, it was Logano and Blaney. They restarted up front, and they both lock up the tires going into turn one. Logano goes off course. Blaney slides the fronts. And that strategy was over. I think part of Blaney with his issue was he's seeing the 22 coming across the racetrack. Yeah. He's trying to figure out where am I going with him coming across like that. Well, he's currently ninth, so he was able to rebound the best Logano back in 28th. The other aspect that. of that is that's your first attempt at, you know, that restart on old tires. Every other right. restart, every other attempt at that turn one corner is on fresh uh, Goodyear rubber, and them things are sticky. You know, you go up there on, on cold brakes and old tires, you can tell it's a handful. Hey, Daniel Suarez is back in the top 15. Now, one thing I like watching turn one is you climb that hill, 130 feet of elevation change, and just when you need the downforce on the nose the most is right when the hill flattens out, and then you have to turn in, and whoa, nothing sticks. Yeah, all the variables are working against you right. at that point. No load on the front tires. You're starting to turn in. You got the inside tire as light as it's going to be at any point of the racetrack. That's, that's yeah. You, you act like you're a driver. Good luck with that. Ah. <laughs> he is, man. He, he's road, All right. road course ace. I've vintage raced here. I don't, I don't know what you, I don't know what you call that on the racing ladder, but it's a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> Old farts. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Historic Trans Am. Good fun. Good fun. <laughs> I have another one, but I'm not saying. Uh, you know, it's it's a bunch of old half-fast guys trying to <laughs> prove to everybody that they're as quick as they once thought they were, and we're not. But we have a lot of fun. 
That's half <laughs> F-A-S-T, Barry. I watched you at Sonoma. It was a lot of fun to watch you guys. Uh, it was a blast. We'll get you in one of those. I don't want to qualify. I don't want to qualify for that yet. <laughs> you, you are. Here we go, boys. I'm excited. Get on your feet. All right, they're going to restart with 12 to go. Chastain, Almondinger, Briscoe, Bowman, Elliott, Kyle Busch, Reddick, Sindrick. Here we go. Pretty good jump for Briscoe. He's looking to the inside. Oh, dive bomb, boy. sliding the tires. Kyle Open the door outside. up. It might be Reddick to the. No. Reddick got loose, and it's Chastain and Dinger. Briscoe's still loose. Great restart for Tyler Reddick. Somebody's off the track. 14. That's a stop and go, unfortunately. Or not a stop and go, that's a pass through. Pass through at pit road speed. And that will be that's devastating to Briscoe's hopes today. Alex Bowman and Chase Elliott up at the top five. Wow, around goes Sindrick. And around goes Kaz Grala. Now we've got about two minutes to clear the track before they have to throw a caution flag. So plenty of time for them to get going and for us to stay green. While they race on, let's first go back and show you what happened to Chase Briscoe. You see, he was loose there. I called that, grabbed the gear and downshifted. Somebody got uh, in the back of him. Well, I see, I, I don't like that. That was contact with the 16 and the 14, but that's, the rule's the rule, though. And here are the Where spins. Are the how you get there? First, Austin Sendrick uh, after contact, probably from Joey Hand, maybe Brad Keselowski, and Kaz Grala, uh, collateral damage in that one. Here's uh, Chase Briscoe. Protest that pass through. I got shoved off. And if you want to argue it, we could probably run one more. Yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, it. it whether you got pushed off or not, if you go yeah. off, you've went off. And, and he, we he makes kind a of good went point. This at Indy though last year. Yeah, he makes a good point, but it's not like Daytona, Talladega, Atlanta, where you get pushed below the line. It's true. He got pushed off the track at, at Indy last year. Well, it's a moot point because something's happened to Corey LaJoy's car, and there is fluid on the track. So race control has Chase Briscoe's situation under review. I'm not sure. That, I think they may look at that a second time. I, I'm sorry, Tony. Man, I, I don't see it that way. He got knocked off of the racetrack. You can see clearly at no penalty the 14, and I agree with I that agree. call. That's the right call, in my opinion. I, I it, you Trust can me, see I'm the not contact upset in the back it. of his car. I understand Agreed. what you said by the rule, but it's a different scenario if you get knocked off the, uh, you know, the racing surface. That wasn't yeah. his doing. It wasn't his choice. He got moved out that way. Yeah, he didn't cut the course. He got punted off course. Well, and the good thing, the, the most important part of it is long, as long as it's the same for everybody, I agree with that too because You can see right there racing. he got hit, moved out of the way. Or enough of a penalty by just losing the track position that you did. Well, now, if he had a shot across there and gained three or four spots, right I'd have been telling you a little bit different side Check of the story and had a different opinion. Right well, I don't side. see he lost no. three or four spots by gotten, getting get knocked here. off. There's three. There's four spots. And that's enough penalty. See, he and Almendinger got together, but then the loss of forward motion might have taken Chase Elliott into him and off the track. But whatever, he didn't just drive off there. So good call. Well, just to your point, it, he, he did lose spots in the transaction. So I, I like it for all the drivers because something happens and you get pushed off. I mean, that's what happened last year at Indy and, and it ruined his race. You know, he was in a position to 
not necessarily have have a result where you had to go and do a stop and go and, and lose all those positions. This is a step in the right direction. Just actually glad to see that it's changing because it does give these other drivers peace of mind that they can race, they can put themselves too wide without necessarily having the risk of it automatically being a penalty. So Briscoe falls to eighth and he will stay there as the penalty has been withdrawn. Okay, where's my tires? Where's the first guy on those four tires that we That would we be saw. Cole Custer in ninth place. Ninth place. Going to have to keep an eye on that. Cautions, precautions. Martin we Truex said. in 12th and Kevin Harvick in 16th. That conversation's going to start being. They oh. have fresher tires. And not only Custer in ninth, somebody that had trouble, Christopher Bell's up to 11th now. There is when everybody was last on pit road. Note Custer in ninth place, lap 53, 11 laps fresher tires, as has Christopher Bell, Martin Truex, Eric Jones, and Kevin Harvick. This helps fuel mileage, Vollmendinger. And Briscoe will pit under this caution. We'll step away and go Fox side by side coming to 10 laps to go in Austin. Most road course wins in the Cup Series all time. Chase Elliott has seven, including this race last year. Tony Stewart has eight. And they are all topped by Jeff Gordon with nine. Man. Joe Vice got you right there. They're not an owner. 
but the old vice chairman got you and wins on the road course. You know how many I got? I'm not even going to give you anything. Say, did I got make, one. Did you make the one, list? One, yeah. Didn't even <laughs> on the list. Made the, barely made the race. All right, we learned that uh, Chase Briscoe stopped because he had flat spotted his tires, so he had to give up that eighth spot uh, to come in. You got Ross Chastain trying to win his first cup race. A.J. Allmendinger trying to be the first driver since Dan Gurney, my hero, to win his first three cup races on road courses. And then you got Tyler Reddick, you got Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman. Who do you like? I don't know. I'd still like A.J. Allmendinger. I think he is, I think he's just been biding his time, taking care of his equipment, taking care of his tires. And when push comes to shove at this, and there's a long way to go before we get to that, I still feel like. But when it comes to it, he will get himself in that position. Now, Chastain and Allmendinger were teammates at Colleg Race in the Xfinity <laughs> Series, and they have tried taking each other out for a win on the last lap. Yes, but I'm telling you, I'm sticking with it. The ones to watch, do we remember that? It was Ross Chastain, birthday, the the uh, the owner. I'm telling you, track house racing. Ross Chastain, three podium finishes the last three races I think today's the day and it's gonna happen boom <laughs> <laughs> all right it all begins with this restart with nine laps to go four five Chevys up front then Kyle Busch's Toyota and remember pole sitter Ryan Blaney his Ford is in seventh ahead of Cole Custer and Michael McDowell Custer Truex in 10th and Harvick in 15th with those fresher tires Let's see how this plays out. Up the hill to turn one. There's some rebels. That's a rear lockup. Chastain and Almondinger. They trade paint. They may Somebody's around and off coming down the hill. Cloud of smoke and a hearty Cole Custer. Cole Custer. Tough break there. And he is rolling. We will stay green. Chastain got some run, got some room off of turn one. He ran Almendinger real wide. Hopefully that don't come back to bite him. Well, we've seen Almendinger's M.O wait for or force the driver ahead into a mistake and then pounce. So he's got seven, maybe eight laps to play. And that pounce, where are you going to do it? 11 right here. Big time corner. You see three wide back there in the back. And Denny Hamlin around. around backwards. Denny Hamlin. You knew it was coming. It's crunch time. Long straightaway getting into 12. And Hamlin pulls away. Chase Elliott in fourth, struggled in qualifying, but he has had a methodical, steady race here, trying to become the fourth Hendrick driver to win this season. Get him in that mirror. That's what A.J. Allmendinger's trying to do. Push him as hard as you can, get him looking in that mirror, force him into a mistake. Get in his mirror, get in his head. Exactly. Yeah, it's hard to focus on your marks in front of you when you're looking in the mirror, looking behind you. And how do you get it in the mirror, like doing exactly what he's doing right there, looking the inside, getting way out of his sight. That way he's looking way unfamiliar territory in that mirror, Try to make a mistake. Eric Almirola has spun. You've had a bad lap, Tony. Yeah, we're trying to see if we can spin all of our cars on, it looks like. Of the drivers on the new tires, Cole Custer spun. Truex is up to eighth. Harvick holding at 14th. The thing that's been impressive at least from sitting here. I mean, I, I have the confidence that A.J. Allmendinger is going to get himself in a really good spot. But Ross Chastain, no matter who it's been that's been challenging him, he just has not made a mistake. He's been extremely solid. Look at this. His heart rate is lower now than it was at the midpoint in the race when he was battling. He's in control of this race. He might just be wearing out <laughs> towards the end. <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> not much rate left. Man, but I think you're just cool as ice, just like you were saying, and not making those mistakes. 
Well, and, when and I mean, they're breathing down his neck, feeling the pressure. Absolutely, but he's he, he's kept himself just enough of a gap for the majority of it. He's had times when they've when they're fighting and getting close to him, but he's doing a great job on all these restarts of getting through one just like here. Gets himself off the corner, gets the lead back, wow, then settles back into his rhythm. Five wide in a couple of places there on that restart. And uh, Cole Custer around on that one. He has recovered, but he's back at 41st place. Hamlin and Al Marola now are 32nd place. Hamlin and Al Marola now 33rd and 34th recovering from their spins. And around goes Kaz Grala. Jamie? How about the run for Chase Elliott up to fourth right now? Talk to his crew chief this morning, Alan Gustafson. He said, we didn't go to the road course test in the offseason. It was actually the end of the championship run, and we focused on that. They unloaded here, and they were way off. His driver was not comfortable. They didn't have the car set up right. They have worked on it today, even overcoming a slow pit stop to find themselves in the top five, something they have not done yet this season. AJ Allmendinger has had all this time to go to school on Ross Chastain. If Chastain has a weakness on this course, Allmendinger has likely already figured out where it is. The question will be, when will he make his move? Or can you, yep. can you take advantage of that? Is he also weak in that section, or is it a section where if he gets close enough that he can take advantage? Chastain has not put a wheel wrong. Until right there, there it is. Until just now. Missed that apex. But still got a decent launch off the corner. That all comes from having him in the mirror. You know, that was a breaking zone. You've got a road course ringer in A.J. Allman. Where do they usually shine, Tony? Under braking. Absolutely. See, has him in the mirror, moving over, protecting that line. Now you don't have as good an entrance coming up. Enables him to hang it out a little bit. Gets a better run up off. Yeah, good defensive line there. That might have sparked his, uh, spiked his heart rate just a little. Missed the bottom again. I don't know that that was, I think that may have been by design. That's almost a double apex corner. But you got to be careful opening that door up because he'll take it. Listen to those tires ball. Slipping and sliding, and you can see AJ. You heard the tires, and then you look up, and then he's sideways, going for it. It's what we came to see. Most important corner on the course, right here, turn 20. You got to have the momentum to get to the start finish line off this corner and then up the hill. You got a lot of track to play with here. This track, if we break it down into three sectors to try to look at any differences between this lead duo. Sector one from start finish down to turn six at the end of the S's. Sector two takes us through the hairpin and all the way down to the exit of turn 12. Third sector back around to start finish. So we've been tracking these two leaders through the three different sectors. Chastain quicker in section one and three. Almendinger faster in sector two. That includes that long back straightaway. And that's exactly where we saw him get right to the rear bumper of Ross Chastain. Sector two, which is his strong suit. Tony, you led us to that. Where is he stronger and where is his weaknesses? Find out where his weaknesses are and make sure a caution doesn't come out. Loris Hesman has spun. He's at the end of a runoff area. I think and he's no power with six to go. Caution, there it is. And there's the yellow. But it takes you right back to there. Strengths and weaknesses. And I think AJ Allmendinger has found his strengths, knows his, and knows that uh, weakness of the car in front of him at Ross Chastain. And where is it? Getting into 11. He was all over him, and I think that's where he's going to make his dive bomb move. And absolutely. And you saw it too, where, where through that carousel, 
he got a little bit free. This might actually work to AJ's advantage, let the tires cool off a little bit. I think Ross is in a good spot, but this probably benefits AJ more than it does anybody else. Joey Hand has taken his car to the garage, joining Corey LaJoy, Ricky Stenhouse, Bubba Wallace, and Andy Lally. So 34 cars all on the lead lap will battle in the final five laps at Circuit of the Americas. That's uh, Joey Hand's car done for the day, apparently. Fairly certain fuel is out of the equation. We don't have to worry about fuel mileage anymore now. It is strictly, it's the old saying of smoke them if you got them. <laughs> this, is, this is that time now. Larry, would you have any sets left in the pits if you wanted tires? Well, Mike, if I'm up there inside the top 10, I'm not going to have to worry about a wheel coming off because I've already packed my pit equipment up. <laughs> We're done coming to pit road. You're headed for Richmond, huh? All right. Oh, they got new tires, but again, you, you're sitting here with uh, 34 drivers on the lead lap. Well, we might see some takers of those in the back trying to better their position at in the final rundown here. Uh, pit road is closed. You see that flashing red light. Five to go is the signal from the flag stand. Now remember the one to go here does not come at start finish. It comes at turn 11. The USFL took over Birmingham, Alabama this week. Players and coaches began preparing for the first season. Anticipation is building. First game is just 20 days away. April 16th, the New Jersey Generals and Birmingham Stallions will battle on both Fox and NBC. All right, one of you is a general, one of you is a stallion. Oh, he'll want to be the general, but I promise you I can outrun him, so I'll be a stallion. Tony, <laughs> okay. nobody's won more road course races than you have. You're the king at this. I want to know, all right, I'm going to put you in the seat of that one car. What do you need to do to hold off that 16 of A.J. Allmendinger? I think the most crucial thing is when you get on the gas for the restart, control that restart zone, make sure that when you get on the gas, you don't slip the tires. Make sure your tires are clean. So when you get to turn one, and, and just like Mike mentioned, when that load comes off the front of the car, that the tires are clean, you have the best grip you can have. Just try to get one good clean corner. If you can get it right and nobody interrupts it, get a little bit of a gap, then you're in control again. All right, buddy. How are you going to win the race, you A.J. Allmendinger? Uh, do exactly what he's been doing and what we've been yeah. talking about. Get in his mirror, stay in his mirror, keep him occupied. The spotter's telling him exactly how far back, but we as drivers still have that habit of looking in that mirror. And if you're moving off center left and right, you're wondering and you'll eventually start questioning whether your spotter's on top of it or not. Now, in my opinion, Mike, if you're going to ask me, I've only won one of these things, but I'm going to capitalize on where I've been good at all day long, and that is turn 11. That's where the dive bomb's coming, the biggest passing zone in this track. The race was won in the truck series there, and I think that's why A.J. Allmendinger goes for it. Now, in the truck race, which went to overtime, Kyle Busch was the leader, and he was in a horrible position. If he opens up the entry to turn 11 to get a big launch down the straight away he'll get dive bombed on the inside and that's exactly what happened if he takes a defensive line into turn 11 as the leader then everybody goes wide and slingshots him coming off the corner now they're going to dive bomb me getting into 12. It i mean that's been the, hard to win from where he was that's what's so cool about the layout of this track yes. it creates those scenarios kind of cat and mouse if you will of if you protect he's going to hold it out and get a run on you uh, up off the corner and set up turn 12. and those turn 11 back to back passing zones at a road course are what makes this track unique and pretty special and as tony said during a qualifying in practice turn 11 is so wide you can't block the whole corner. Yeah, you can either block the first half of it or right. the last half, but you can't block both halves. So it's it's pick your poison. If you if your car is turning really well, I think you can guard the inside a little bit. If you know okay. you can get it to cut and you have good forward drive, you give yourself a better opportunity, but you have to know what your car is capable of. If it's not turning good, you 
you may not be able to protect the inside on entry. You may have to it, rely on that exit. Let's show it, you what yeah, we're it, talking about uh, from overtime in the truck race here yesterday. It's exactly Bush what is you in the just white said. 51. And he held it out. He didn't go to the inside to protect whatsoever. And you can see it. The rest is history. He went to turn into the corner. Alex Bowman and Stuart Friesen were there. Hit him. Knocked all three trucks out. Laid it in the lap. Of Zane Smith. Of Zane Smith in the 38 truck. And off to victory lane he goes. And, and I think you're exactly right, Tony. Does Kyle Busch look back on that and think, man, maybe I should have hold over there and, and protected it. But that was such a huge dive bomb. I mean, he had a car length and a half. I mean, he had three car lengths ahead of the second and third place trucks. The problem was second and third were racing each other. <laughs> they weren't trying to necessarily get by Kyle in that move. Those two trucks were racing each other and trying to protect their position. And you knew it was just a racing incident because after it was over, everybody was mad at everybody. Yeah, that's about. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a that's a race. Yeah. What you call that? <laughs> that's right. There's only one guy happy. That guy's pretty happy. Justin Marks. I bet his heart rate's higher than uh, his drivers. And it should be. He should be proud. That's right. His driver, uh, AJ Allmendinger, his driver, Ross Chastain, in the lead. AJ Allmendinger won on the Indy Road Course last year after Chase Briscoe and Denny Hamlin had a crazy battle for the lead with two laps to go. And it's a very similar, I wouldn't say similar, but it's very chaotic. Turn one at Indy on the road course is just as chaotic as turn one is here. Look at that old heart rate. We're under caution right now. This guy is leading the race. His first race could win his first race ever in a cup series. And you can tell that heart rate hasn't went down much. Still 130 beats per minute, pretty high for an under caution. Well, now he has more time to think about it which is the problem. That's why it's not going down. He's sitting there. He's doing exactly what you and I just talked about. He's trying to think, what do I have to do to protect this lead? How am I going to do this different? Every time you do a restart, they start. If, if you do the same thing every time, they are going to figure out your pattern and capitalize on it. So he's trying to figure out, how do I do something in the restart zone just a little bit different than what I've been doing before to try to get these guys off seat? It's called composure on three. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Alex Bowman wants to be able to do just what Zane Smith did in that truck race. He is in the stealing seat. Uh, if those two up front plus Tyler Reddick get together at turn 11 or elsewhere, he or Chase Elliott could steal this. Very it's, true. This race is far from over. It's anybody's race. And we've seen that time and time again this year with this series. This track is awesome for these new cars. Uh, it's only our second time here and our first time in dry weather, but what a tremendous race these cars and these drivers have put on for us today. And they've looked fun to drive. I mean, it's been since the end of 16 since I drove a cup car, but those cars, we would get the left front off the ground on left-hand corners, and you'd shift to the right, and the right front tire would come over. These have held a real nice platform. They just look like they're fun cars to drive out there. Martin Truex back there with Ryan Blaney, our pole sitter, seventh and eighth. Remember, Truex has much newer tires uh, than the rest of this top ten. Uh, so does uh, Eric Jones, Austin Dillon, William Byron, and a couple of cars behind them. Michael McDowell, veteran road racer in 11th, and Daniel Suarez has uh, passed and cycled his way up to 12th after leading the first 15 laps of this race. Going to see some beating and banging five, six wide at the top of this hill. Get them brakes worked up, warmed up, excuse me, get the tires, heating those tires. So important to have grip when you get to the top of that hill. We saw a lot of brake lock up in turn one yesterday in practice and in the qualifying sessions where you're opti you know, trying to get that optimal lap. We're down to the end of this thing where now you've got to you, you've got to get that optimum lap no matter how many laps are left on your tires. 
I have a feeling we will see a little more break up, lock up than we have the entire race on this restart. I want to see if AJ Allmendinger tries something different at the top of the hill. You know, Chastain, we've said it, he runs wide. We know that he's going to do that. AJ knows he's going to do that now. Will he try to change something up when they Turn get up 20. to the top? They Here will go. restart with three to go on their feet. A lot better jump this time for AJ. Takes a late cut for the corner. He's got some momentum. Nope, right to the back bumper of Chastain. Bowman challenging. And the restart is under review as Tyler Reddick. And caution has waved. You heard me say it. AJ was definitely a lot better restart. I some, think that was. Somebody spun out there. Oh, Joey Logano, third time yeah. today. He's had a rough weekend. Yes. Rocks split. Toe, Toe links broke. Rear of the car. You see the right rear toe link. Yeah. Probably contact at the top of the hill. Now NASCAR rules. They want drivers to stay in their respective lane until they pass the start finish strike. With well, a three wide there, even before that, so it's. Yeah. That's a Haley in the middle. And more. There's two different uh, scenarios there that they could be looking at. Apparently, somebody didn't get going there. And there's where Steve. Tyler Reddick went to the inside of the two front row restarters. Oh, he get the lead. The, wall, the five. Oh, and Logano and Kurt Busch and more. Or That's Kyle sorry. Larson, isn't it? No, yeah. I thought it was. No, it is Kyle it Larson. It is Kyle. Yeah. Well, let's ride with Kurt Busch through this. Looking to your right. Five, looking to your right. He's out there on your right and two on your left. Still on your right, two more on your left. Five is only one right. Ooh. Bad day at Black Rock. Pretty hard contact. Yep. This this car this new generation car just doesn't give. Just keeps going. So Joey Logano, Kurt Busch, and Kyle Larson are all involved there coming out of turn one. Flat tires, are they up? I believe they're all up. I would agree oh, they all up. look up. That uh, right rear is pointing toward the center of the car. That's not toe in, that's, that's a whole foot in. And they're going to have a, a little bit of the rock quarry there to clean up. Just a little, a little sweep up to do. Ninth caution flag, the most ever on a road course in a cup race, is 10. That's happened twice. Regan? Well, Mike, Justin, Mark started track house racing over a year ago, or a little over a year ago. So much success so soon. Now your driver is in position to get the first win for track house racing. What's your heart rate like right now? Well, it's a little easier to drive these things and watch them, honestly, when you got when you got uh, that, this much invested in it. I mean, it wouldn't be a NASCAR road course race if it didn't take us an hour to run these last 10 laps. I mean, anything could happen at the end. I'm just proud of everybody's effort. Ross is a heck of a race car driver. We got him, giving him a fast car. I'm just watching like all of you, man, just, just hoping he can bring it home. Thanks, Justin. Good luck. Daniel Suarez has pitted, so has Kyle Larson and Joey Logano. And Ross Chastain now sits second. Where do you want to be on this next restart, though, inside or outside? I want to be a half a lap ahead. I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I still think you want to be on the inside. I mean, 
I believe you have a lot more control of your of your destiny being on the inside. I mean, Ross has done a really good job, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with what he's been doing. Nope. He's going in, he's guarding that inside, and he is using up the entire exit. He's not going to give it to somebody on the outside. He's going to make them. They're going to have to drive around him on the outside. Not to get so. Hey, Reddick's in the lead. Reddick's the one that's going to take the point. inside. And, and, man, I'm telling you, he ran uh, the 16 of Almendinger wide, opened the door up for Reddick to hook that inside, and he did. And now he is your leader. He will be taking that inside line. But I'm telling you, it, it's just you just take whatever you can do. Elbows up. You're going to try to push this, him off on the outside. Try to protect the inside. Now NASCAR reviewed the last restart and they found no foul. The restart was good. So now we're under caution getting ready for NASCAR overtime. Regan. Chris Rice, team president at Colic Racing. You've got your guy, A.J. Allmendinger, in position to win this race right now. What do you tell him on these wild restarts at the end? Hey, we're just here for trophies. That's what you tell him. You tell him, get after it. It's time to go. And uh, we've had two great Colic Racing cars today, and that's all kudos to the guys and girls here at Colic Racing. But A.J. Allmendinger is definitely going to put on a show, I'll guarantee you. He's on the inside lane for the first time, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, Chris. Chris Rice, general manager of Colic Racing. Uh, the Rice family with a lot of history at South Boston Speedway in Virginia. So they'll be green next time. Matt Colick. And Richard Childress, the three car owners at the front of the field. Then it's Rick Hendrick, Roger Penske, you know, the, Joe Gibbs, the usual suspects. <laughs> Got to give those guys a lot of credit. I mean, they're holding their own in this sport, and, and Matt Colley has certainly stepped up to the plate, invested heavily in NASCAR, obviously for great reasons, seeing good return and, and loving racing and what he's doing and, and doing a, a whale of a job, winning the uh, Xfinity races and competing for wins in the Cup. Can't say enough about them and their organization. Exactly. He's done a great job in the Xfinity Series. This was the perfect time for new organizations and new people, new car owners, to come in the series with a new car. It's as level a playing field as it's ever been because everybody's starting from scratch. Yeah. And now we got two drivers on the front row, both looking for their first career win. This is going to get interesting. Let's go back to why we're under caution. That's Joey Logano in yellow, Kyle Larson, and this is Kurt Busch. toe link uh, that controls the angle of those rear wheels toe in and toe out. That's why they call it a toe link. That's how you measure it. And that one is way broken in. But that's a part that they can replace. Again, going back to the strength of these race cars. I mean, all three of those cars, there's no way that if that was the old car, they would have kept going. You're going to replace that toe link on the 22, the five place, whatever they have. And, and uh, they're going to see the end of this race because of that. So we're coming to overtime. Green, white, checker, two laps of overtime. If the leader takes the white flag under the green flag, the next flag ends the race, yellow or checker. This changes everything, everything that you expected about this restart. We've seen Chastain get into the corner. We've seen A.J. Allmendinger on his outside. We know what to expect. Not only us watching, those guys behind them. Everybody knows what to expect challenging as you go up into this corner uh, of turn one. Now, with Ty Red Reddick being your leader, nobody has a clue what's going to happen in front of them. Oh, well, I do. Attack, <laughs> attack, attack. All right, but as he exactly. overdrive the corner, does he slide like Joey Logano does? Well, Chastain and Elmendinger both had a lot of experience in doing so and leading this pack to the green. Well, both guys on the front row haven't controlled the restart from this side, so it's totally new for both of them. And first everybody time behind winners, because of so. First time winners have won three of the last 11 races. Here we go to overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank. He's going to have to run him wide. He does. Oh, boy. Contact. Almendinger trying to force the issue to the inside. Nothing there. He's up against the bumper. 
of Tyler Reddick. Reddick side by side. Chastain takes the lead back. That Power was a move. Strong move. He had to get into him a little bit. He leaned on him, but it, man, if he didn't, he was going to be swallowed up. He'd have been fourth right there. Aggressive move, but that's what it takes to win this race. Absolutely. He didn't do anything to take anybody out. Nobody spun out in the transaction. Let it go. And he's pulling away. Because they're side by side for second. Almendinger inside has the preferred line here. And he has second over Reddick and Bowman with Christopher Bell in fifth. Chastain needs to utilize his strong suit. Where was it in this oh. third zone? Get through the stadium section good. Make sure, make sure you've got enough distance between you and AJ that he can't dive bomb you into 11. We all know that's where the setup is. Bowman to the inside is going to grab third spot. And Chastain now just has to drive time trial laps. He honestly Careful. just needs to not make mistakes that's right, right now. And that's exactly just what you Calm down. Run your lap. Run your smooth lap. Make AJ have to do all the work. AJ is the one that's going to have to pressure himself to catch him if he just runs a solid lap up front. Mine isn't. My heart rate's <laughs> through the roof. His might be 149. I am anxious and excited for him. And I think, again, just like I said, utilize your strong suits. He did a great job through the stadium section, gaining some ground. If I'm his spotter, I'm telling him everything's in front of him. Don't look Pressure at that mirror. Right Don't here. worry about Bye anything game. behind. Just run your lap right now. Chase Briscoe has a flat tire. One lap to go. The leader has seen the white flag. So the next flag, the race will be over. A.J. Allmendinger, three quarters of a second back. Hey, guys, unless the 48 gets close, just leave him alone here. That's Allmendinger's radio. And, and through, through the, the S's. Far with Chastain. Yep. Getting through those S's really good. Through the S's, Allmendinger loses a tenth of a second to the leader. Ross has done a great job of getting off the corner, getting back to the gas, not slipping the tire. That has been his strong suit. Ages. Kyle Busch has spun but continues. And he was running fifth. I was just fixing to say the rebound of Joe Gibbs. Here it comes. The last ditch effort dive bomb. Quite a ways back. 160 miles an hour. Down this back straightaway to turn 12 and then down to 45 miles an hour Look right here. Much ground, AJ Almonier gains right there. But Chastain didn't miss the apex. He's so. on him. Almoninger's there. Open the door up. He won't open this one up though, nope. right here. No. Nope. Oh, he's going to use. AJ's going to open it for him. Left. He moved him. Moved him. AJ moved Is him. Is he going to get Chastain moved back? Chastain comes back. Chastain, will he answer? And Bowman wants to steal it. Oh, that he'll get the chance. Bowman's under him. Oh, my God. <laughs> Chastain's going to have to move them both. You're going to have to move them both. Oh, he is. Oh. And around Bill goes all the both off the bumper of Chastain. And Ross Chastain beats and bangs his way to turn 20 and off One the race. corner to the checkered flag. Hey, I don't mind that. He got moved and moved him back. Absolutely. Great job, boy. AJ Allmendinger didn't have anything to lose. He went for it. He dove bombing in there. He went for it, moved him out of the way, tried to win this race, tried to steal it from Chastain, did everything he could do for his win. Man, what an awesome finish for both of those guys. But Ross Chastain, whale of a job navigating those last two corners. They will replay the last lap of this race till the end of time. When we see the replay of that, all three of those drivers did exactly what they needed to do in that scenario. I mean, it's just unbelievable last third of a lap. Bowman, Bell, third, Chase Elliott, fourth, Tyler Reddick, fifth. 
You mean there were other cars in the first I know three? it, man. Good rebound for Chase Elliott, Christopher Bell. The 29-year-old watermelon farmer from Alva, Florida, has his first career win in the NASCAR Cup Series, becoming the third first-time winner this year. Here's the restart. AJ looks Reddick. really good right there. Yeah, but Reddick had the position. Yep. And right here, you'll see Chastain gets into the eight, moves him into Almendinger, moves them both up the track, does it again there, gains position. Not here, but again, we always talk about setting yourself up for the next apex. There he's in position and launches to the lead. Now let's go to the last lap. He protected, AJ was there, moved him out of the way, as he should have, going for a win like this. But you knew the payback was coming, Tony. Yeah, and, and then you got Alex Bowman that's snuck in the picture, too, that is keep trying to keep them both honest. He gets into the back of the one car, gets his nose underneath to the right. Then you don't know who's going to make it the rest of the way. Bowman sets up for a big launch off this corner. And it's going to be right the stadium. with them. Well, he opened the door up there, yep. but he got a good run. And this now he has to protect. AJ had the spot. It's a double kink to the left there, so you can guard the first part of it. That last part just gave AJ enough room to get his nose in, get by. But then right here, look at Bowman. It's like, yep. we think Bowman's going to win this thing and has the lead. They were racing each other. Bowman got there, and boy, Croquet has and that's Chastain exactly. sends the 16 into the 48. And it's exactly what he had to do. If he didn't hit him hard enough that he moves him into the 48, the 48 wins the race. He sends hit him it. hard enough that he bounced him into the croquet <laughs> into the 48. Wow, what a finish. Great job, Ross Chastain. Trackhouse Racing, your new cup winner. Happy birthday, Justin Marks. Ross Chastain, crew chief Phil Surgeon, owner Justin Marks, uh, chief spotter, young one Brandon McReynolds for that team. And Alex Bowman had a shot to steal it. Came close. He played it right. All three of those guys played their position and their role in that last third of the lap. They played it right. I think he's got the crew chief in there. That's awesome. That is awesome. Why not? <laughs> I wonder what his heart rate is now. What it was when he had to move him out of the way, both of them. Oh, uh, I'm told he picked up the spotter and route back to uh, victory lane. Second at Phoenix, second at Atlanta. So he's been top three now in uh, the last four races this season. Makes me want to go indoor skydiving. Come on, Tone, what do you think? <laughs> I'm all right with that. I won't, I'm not going on that tower. Yeah, here, comes the, here comes the spotter. Yeah. Is that an Uber Black, or is that, did you call for that, or? Did you have a reservation? I don't know, but that's the best ride you're going to get right there for today. Hey, how about that flag? They've been keeping that one ready. First, First wind, wind flag. flag with the watermelon man on it. Well deserved. You gotta love a first time winner. And especially in such a dramatic finish as that one. Well, here's Ross's signature move. Smash that watermelon. I don't know the car, I think it. <laughs> Justin Marks jumps in for a hug. And next, Regan Smith. Ross Chastain has been so close this year to getting that first career win. 
Ross, today you couldn't be denied. You had to fend him off at the end. You go from first to third. There was beating. There was banging. What was that last lap like, and what is this first win like? I don't know, Regan. That's insane. To um, go up against some of the best with AJ. I mean, I know he's going to be upset with me, but we race hard, both of us, and he owes me one. But when it comes to a cup win, man, I can't, I can't let that go down without a fight. So Justin Marks, Trackhouse, um, Onyx Holmes, iFly, Advent Health, the Moose, a million Moose members. They better be celebrating tonight all across the country and the world. Phil Surgeon, man, he is so good. People don't know how good this group is. I can't believe Justin Marks hired me to drive this car, Regan. You lost control of that final restart. You get the you get a good restart on the outside, which nobody had done. What did you have to do to make that happen? And how's that watermelon tasting right now? It's never tasted sweeter, I gotta tell you. I don't know. I don't know how we got by, back by. I was so worried about AJ on the second to last restart that I let Tyler drive right by both of us. And AJ's so good. I've learned so much from him. And it was like, how do you go beat the guy? He taught me so much. And I've learned so much from so many people from 417 Speedway back home with my dad. I was thinking about him those late restarts. My dad used to make me race on old tires. And back then, if I raced on old tires, I was not going to win. It was in my head before I even started. And it crossed my mind, like, we're not going to win. We're on old tires. But I, I couldn't think that way. I thought neutral. Chevrolet, everything they do for me, gave me the tools to try to go execute. And we did it. And it was quite a battle between Ross Chastain and Alex Bowman. And Alex, you ran there in the top 10 all day, but you almost snuck that one away. What's your takeaway from that last couple of laps there in battling for the win? Yeah, for sure. Just uh, we had a really fast Ally Camaro. I've really been trying to do a better job as a race car driver at these road courses. And I felt like uh, from, you know, where we started the weekend, I accomplished that. So proud of Greg and all the guys. Hate that uh, he didn't come away with the win, but happy for Ross getting his first win. Um, it's been a, a crap weekend, so I'm ready to get home and see the dogs and uh, move on to, uh, to next weekend. Glad to come away with a second place finish. All right, hope you feel better. Alex Bowman finishes second. Christopher Bell third. Chase Elliott, Tyler Reddick, the top five. The Watermelon Man from Alva, Florida celebrates in Texas. <laughs>